Step into the enigma with Paranormal M. Subscribe, hit the notification bell, and be prepared to embark on a journey through our latest captivating tales. Brace yourself for the unexpected as we venture into the unknown together. Black figure in the corner. Backstory. I have witnessed weird things in my house before. I have lots of stories. But these two are the ones that I actually saw something. So the first one, I was in grade one, and my sister was babysitting me while my brother and mom were at work. Our mom told us to clean the house. I was a bad kid and hated listening. So when my sister told me to clean, I was being a brat, and I said no. So my sister grabbed me and dragged me to the front of the hallway so I could sweep. But I remember I was laughing while she was dragging me. I was being annoying like that. But when I looked straight into the hallway, a long hallway by the way, I swear to you, I saw a black figure that looked like a man. It was like the side view of a man. Had like a cowboy looking hat. Just straight up walked into the bathroom. I saw the figure on the closest door. It just walked by like nothing. Obviously, when I saw that, I screamed, started crying. But I didn't tell my sister why. But that freaked me the fuck out. It was the first time I had ever seen something. And I fully remember that man or things walk. The other story, I was a bit older. I was in grade 7, and it was maybe around 8 or 9 p.m., and I was home alone. I was on my sister's laptop, and I decided to listen to music on my iPod. I got up, and I was facing backwards towards the living room, and I had my headphones on. But for some reason, I had the urge to turn around. So, I turned around and directly across from me was a corner. There was a black figure in this corner, standing kind of weird, with his arms a little out, and it was just there. I was shook. Didn't expect that. So I turned back and looked back again, and it wasn't there anymore. I'm glad to say I never saw black figures again, but I can't guarantee that fact. I've seen things out of the corner of my eye, or sometimes a quick glance, but I won't 100% say that those could be a black figure or a ghost, and I'm glad. I don't know what seeing a black figure means, but I never saw it again. My dead grandfather may have come to visit. Help. My grandfather died in 2011 of pancreatic cancer. I honestly don't really know him, and I only have a few memories of him. My family wasn't as close with him when I was born. We honestly never got a lot of time to spend time with each other. But ever since he died, I have had feelings of him. Like as if he was with me in certain moments of time. It was kind of like I could feel his presence. It's weird. And I believe he has visited me, because I'm my dad's youngest child. And he never really got to spend a lot of time with me. One night I was sleeping, and I'd woken up on my back with my head a little too much to the left. Kind of like how cats sleep with their heads turned to certain sides. I hope you get it. Anyway, so this position was comfy. I remember lying there, being super lazy to move. I laid there for a few moments. Maybe two minutes. Then I tried to move, and I couldn't. And that's when I realized that I was in sleep paralysis. 
I hadn't noticed because I was too lazy to move in the first place. Anyhow, when I did realize, I instantly got really scared because sleep paralysis scares the fuck out of me. Then I looked to the right where the wall is, and I saw a figure on the wall, a head. I wasn't scared, I actually felt comforted, but still scared. Like a little bit. I had a feeling that this figure felt familiar, and that's why I wasn't scared. I couldn't pinpoint who this was, though, until I felt my head being touched. Something was rubbing my head in a nice way. It was just touching my head, and I felt so secure and not that scared. And I continued looking at the figure, and it never moved. But when it touched my head, I knew who this familiar vibe could be. My grandfather. For some reason, when my head was being touched, I had the strongest feeling that my grandfather was the one touching my head. It was the least scariest paralysis I had ever been in. I was calm. After I came out of it, the figure left. I didn't feel any presence. I honestly feel like this could have been my grandfather comforting me. Maybe knowing sleep paralysis is something that usually terrifies me. I don't know. My deceased sister apparently spoke to my friend. So I remember I was quite young. This happened in grade three. My friend and I were at recess, and we were talking when she told me she had received a note. A legit piece of paper on the ground in her room. The writing was claiming that it was my older sister. I can't remember what she said it said, but... All I remember is her telling me that it was my sister. I wish I could remember what that note said. But the thing is, neither of my siblings had died. My sister was well alive. So whatever, I brushed it off. Then the same year I was eating dinner with my mom and sister, when my sister brought up my mom's first child. They died, a baby girl. A baby girl my mom had lost in miscarriage. I remember being shook as fuck because this was my first time ever hearing about this deceased sibling that I had. But the fact that my friend told me something claimed to being my sister and I never even knew I had a deceased sister scared the hell out of me. No, I'm not going to 100% say that my friend was telling me the truth. But I just find it weird that she said sister. And this sister was dead. And I know 100% I've never mentioned to her about this deceased sibling because I didn't even know about it until after she told me she received this note. I don't know what that was, but I find it creepy as fuck. I don't believe this was my sister, though. She was a baby. How is that possible? Do babies grow up in heaven? Like, I don't know, but... Super weird. Elizabeth and the Doorbell My family lived in an old row home built in the early 1900s. It was truly an odd house. We moved about 13 years ago and my entire family still talks about the house. We had a ghost. Her name was Elizabeth, found in old records of the house. We never had any bad feelings about her or anything like that, but for the most part, she protected us. My brother had a seizure disorder since birth. My elder sister and brother had the third floor, more so of an attic and my parents were on the second floor with the nursery where I was. My room was the nursery that was attached to my parents' bedroom. You had to walk through it to get to the stairs to the third floor, 
It was a weird setup. Elizabeth rang the doorbell, fast and repetitive until my mother got out of bed to check on us. She could walk through my room and I would be awake and sitting up because of the doorbell. I knew she would run up the stairs to check on my brother and sister. It was a very common experience. Every single time my brother was having a seizure would have been missed during the night. Elizabeth never failed to let my mother know something was wrong in the night. One other time to note, the doorbell was not rung from my brother. The doorbell started ringing particularly loud this night. My mom bolted through my door and made eye contact with me, went upstairs. My brother was fine. The doorbell was ringing louder and louder. But this time my dad woke up because this ringing is lasting way longer than normal. My sister was spending the night a few blocks away at a friend's house. The only child unchecked was her. The doorbell was still persistently ringing. My mom threw shoes on, headed out the door to check on her. Doorbell still ringing in this. My mom pulls up to the house. My sister is spending the night at and surrounded by police cars. Apparently, the father of her friend came home very drunk and began attacking her mother. I don't know how many details about what happened there except that my sister wasn't safe. The doorbell stopped ringing at the exact time that my mother's car showed up when she pulled up at that house. 12.49 a.m. Horrible smell. Background on the house. Old Victorian house, about 115, 120 years old, in an old city in Pennsylvania. One death to note in the house that we know of. Natural causes. My whole family and some friends have had some experiences in the house. We're currently working on the nursery for my son, who's due in February. Small connection to activity with my pregnancy. This isn't my first. I've had about five miscarriages while living in this house. My last one being last December. Naturally, I've experienced a good amount of depression after my losses. But December really messed me up. I noticed that I was abnormally depressed around January. I had felt an increase in activity in the house around that time. Like I was being followed. I could hear footsteps pacing around my bed, banging on the walls, concrete wall at that. My cat literally watching something move around my bedroom. Horrid lucid dreams. Things of that nature. My mom and I started talking about it and figured out that whatever's in our home, which I think it's multiple entities, has latched onto my depression and was feeding off of my own negative energy and becoming stronger. My mom and I blessed the house, something we've done many times before. Crystals, sage, holy water, prayer, Bibles open in every room, windows and doors all open. I stepped into my bedroom and firmly told the entity that I was trying to heal, that my sadness was not its own, and that it was not welcome to feed off my energy any longer. That pretty much ended that increase in activity and all was quiet. Back to working on the nursery. We ended up having to tear out half of a wall to fix some wiring that a squirrel had completely chewed up. So our original plan to paint and get that new carpet went far out the window. A few nights ago, my husband and I were woken up by an absolutely horrible smell. Now, my husband is a very heavy sleeper and takes a lot to wake him. So the fact that the smell woke me up, and by the time I sat up in bed, my husband was also awake, just terrified. The smell was strong, pungent, and just plain smelled like rotting meat. I got up and walked through the rest of the house, and it smelled perfectly fine. 
we tried to ignore it, went back to sleep. Husband woke me up again about maybe an hour later and said, It's back. Same smell. Only in our bedroom. Now slightly in the nursery. We opened a window and put a fan on it to blow it out. I threw some holy water around the room and told it to leave us alone. We went back to sleep. I had the most vivid dream of waking up to the smell and seeing something dark standing in the corner of my room. I walked downstairs to wake my mother up. As my mother and I were walking through the hallway to get back to the third floor stairs, I could hear a woman crying in the living room downstairs. In my dream, I leaned over the railing and called out, Who's there? Did this a few times. I got no response except for more crying. My mother had continued to walk down the hall to go up the stairs to the third floor. She stopped at the bottom of the stairs, and I was looking up them and called for me. She said, there's something standing at the top. I walked down the hall to look and woke up when I looked at the top of the stairs. Once I woke up that day and I was alone in the house, I realized that I had not explained to the entities in the house what was happening in the nursery. I sat in my bedroom and politely explained that we had to tear down the wall and fix the wiring so the house didn't burn down, that we were just planning on painting and putting in new carpet. But that was it as far as renovations were concerned, and that I was sorry for not letting them know before we began. We had done massive renovations before had an increase in activity. We figured out it was best to let them know what was going on and that we weren't changing much in the house. The only confusing part is the rancid smell. I've always associated rancid smells with demonic entities, but throughout that whole debacle I didn't feel a negative energy like I have before. It felt like an older gentleman who died in the house being upset about renovations. The smell and my dream would say otherwise. Creepy Tall Figure My best friend, a 20 year old female, and I, a 21 year old female, were just recounting this story. I decided to post it on here. It was just past three in the morning, and I woke up to my phone buzzing. It was my best friend calling. She is quite an anxious person. She doesn't like to do things alone. So I picked up, and I had work at six the next morning, but I gathered it wouldn't be important. When I picked up, she told me that my boyfriend, male 22, had been trying to call me, but I hadn't woken up. He then called her and asked her if she would be able to pick him up. He was out at a friend's pub having drinks with the boys, but decided that he wanted to go home. Him and his friend, a male 21, started walking back. We're in the UK, so the drive is only 10 minutes, but because it's country roads, the walk would be about an hour and a half, especially drunk. She asked me to go with her to collect them, so I reluctantly agreed, but... You know, the circumstances. So on the way there, my best friend was talking, but in my head it was muffled. Mostly because I was trying not to fall asleep in the car. Her car came to a stop and I looked up and realized that we were not yet at our destination. I was confused, so I asked, Why have we stopped? To which she responded, I just told you there's kittens in the hedge. Seemed odd to me, but I looked over and saw some little ears. Because it was so late or early in the morning, there were no other cars around, so I also got out to look. When we reached the hedge, there was nothing in there but branches cracking. So we got back into the car, thinking we were just a bit tired and delusional. We carried on driving down the road. Eventually, we reached the boys. They were on a country road about a mile away from the pub at this point. My best friend has a three-door car, so we both got out to let the boys into the back seats. 
Once in the car, the boys were breathless. They were confused, but gathered it was just because they'd been walking for probably an hour given they'd walked a mile. After catching their breath, they told us to drive quick. Sophie, being Sophie, panicked, so she span her car around and floored it. At first, I suspected a farmer with a gun as we were next to a lot of fields and farmland. What they proceeded to tell us was far more sinister. We asked them what was wrong, to which they both started scrambling to tell us their version of the events. Eventually, they had calmed down, at least a little bit enough to be able to actually explain. They said they had been walking along and heard something in the bushes. They stopped, trying to figure out if they are being paranoid, if there is actually something happening. Silence. They carried on. Same thing happened. But instead of silence this time, they saw a tall shadow figure, taller than a human could ever stand. They said they froze in fear, but the adrenaline started moving their legs. The figure started to inch closer, so they just ran and didn't look back. We all got home safely without seeing the figure again, but part of me believed that those kittens were like a lure to try and get us to go into the hedges. We would have been the next victims after the boys, and I'm convinced that this thing was probably a skinwalker. We've not had an experience like this since, and I hope we don't again. I feel as if my house is having a bunch of paranormal activity, and I have no idea on what I should do. I've been having these weird moments within my household, and I cannot tell whether or not I should actually dig down and investigate, or if I'm just being terribly paranoid. A few days ago, my father said he'd been getting these dreams with my cat, and he'd been trying to protect my cat. He mentioned a black figure coming at him within his dream. He grabbed them by the throat trying to protect my cat. I couldn't tell if he was lying or not, like I couldn't tell if the intoxication of the alcohol was speaking for him, or he was actually telling the truth about his dream and the fragments that he remembered. I didn't think much of it till my brother was on a phone yesterday. It was never my intention to eavesdrop, but I just overheard his phone call with his friend. He mentioned something like a bad spirit ruining his energy, so he felt jaded in a way. I kind of have no idea what stuff he'd been talking about. That's what rose somewhat a bit of suspicion within my mind. Because my friend always talks about how there's always meanings to dreams and she's somewhat of an expert on these things. This morning I'd just been in the bathroom. It was 5.30 a.m. or around there. I was brushing my teeth. Suddenly, a jar of detergent that was on top of my toilet for some reason just flung off. It wasn't even near the edge in the slightest. It just flung off, though. I had no idea how. But there was zero force for it to have flung off like that no idea if this makes sense because I'm not good at explaining it all. Can someone tell me what could be happening? Something kept me inside and I don't know what. This happened to me when I was around the age of six or seven. This was when I used to live in Texas, Houston to be specific, in my old hometown. My parents weren't, well, very that well in money around that time. And the area around our old home was often known as a dangerous area. Usually people would die near my neighborhood because of often, well, shooting occurrences. However, unfortunately, my house was, well, was haunted. 
The cabinets would fly open by themselves, things would go flying off the counter, and many more other situations that happened inside that house. One day I was in the, just sitting within my room, playing with my toys, minding my own business, till I decided that I could go visit my mom downstairs for something. When I tried to open the door, it wouldn't open, and I noticed that it was locked. Of course, I started to panic and tried to unlock it, but it wouldn't unlock and I was just starting to get scared because I felt something dangerous was inside the room with me. Keeping me inside. I was banging on the door crying for my mom when I turned my head around because I felt something watching me. I had a bunch of dolls on a shelf in my room and all of their heads were turned toward my direction. I started hearing slight whispering from my closet. I was banging on my door more and my mom heard my scream. She rushed up the stairs immediately, asking if I was okay, and to open the door for her. I was telling her that I couldn't, something's keeping me in, and that I couldn't get out of the room. She was trying to kick open the door, but unfortunately was unsuccessful. That's when my dad came home from work, and my mom heard him then run down the stairs to get him. She then gave him information on what was happening. As soon as my father heard what was happening from my mom, he ran up the stairs, told me to stand away from the door, and when I stepped away, I heard him banging and trying to pry open the door. It took a few tries, but he finally got the annoying door to open for him. They both rushed inside, asking if I was alright and what happened. I was telling them I was hearing strange noises and sounds coming from the closet inside of my room. Proceeded to point over to where the dolls were. Except for the fact that their heads were all turned toward my direction. Afterwards, they made sure to leave the door open at all times. And told me to never lock that door again. Strange Experience This was a while ago. I was about 14 or 15 years old, and at the time I lived in a very rural area. It was in Mexico, right off the beach, and I had no neighbors. Our closest neighbor was about 10 minutes walking distance. My house was not very well made. It had three poorly made walls around the house, and the fourth wall was more like a third of a wall, and then open air. From the front outside of the house, you can see what was technically a small living room and a sink. Inside that, one third of the wall area had our official small kitchen. Outside of the house, we had a big patio cover, and on one side, near one third of the wall, we had a small adobe fire pit, which we would use to cook nixtamal, which is corn prepped to make tortillas from scratch. Tortillas. Given a bit of background, at that time I was very Christian. I believed in Jesus' second coming. All these details are important. Anyways, it was a calm night. I remember I was outside in the patio helping my mom cook next to mom. My mom was inside the house in the kitchen area cooking for the next morning. Suddenly the wind picked up out of nowhere. I was surprised since there was no wind blowing. I turned to look toward the visible area of the inside of my house when I noticed something similar to like a see-through white bag but shaped like a bed sheet slowly flowing from the kitchen area to the outside of the house. I froze not knowing what I was seeing. I watched it go all the way out, but once it got out, it shot straight up into the sky. As soon as I lost its visibility, the wind stopped and I got extremely quiet. The first thing I thought was, oh my god, was that the rapture? Was my mom taken? Was I left behind? So I called out for my mom. Nothing. I called again, still silent. I ran toward the inside of my house with tears in my eyes, thinking, oh my god, this is it, I'm left behind. I yelled one last time. Then my mom finally answered, yelling back at me. What do you want? Why are you yelling? 
By then, all sound returned, and it felt normal again. I told her what happened, and she told me that we needed to pray immediately. This stuck with me all these years, never knowing what that was, what happened, and why it happened. I had no logical explanation because I went to check on the white thing that flew out and didn't see anything that could have been either a large white bag or a white sheet. The spirits of victims who commit suicide need answers. 33-year-old female here. I don't know if this is the right place to get answers or help, but I'm going to try. I have two instances where spirits have come to me. I've been dealing with depression for some time now. And of course, with depression comes suicidal thoughts. I take no drugs. I don't drink. So I'm clear-minded, and I know this is real. One day I fell asleep after crying for hours, praying to God to help me as I drifted off to sleep in the chair. A random first and last name popped into my head. I don't know why God has wiped my memory because I can't remember the name, but as soon as I woke up, I googled her name and it said she was 32 and committed suicide. This has freaked me out till this day. Still trying to find answers as to why this spirit visited me. I get chills when I think about this. Another incident happened in September. This is where I drifted off to sleep in the bathroom, and I had a vision of Stephen Twitch Boss on September 28th. I only knew Twitch committed suicide, and he worked with Ellen DeGeneres on her show. I knew nothing else about him. Next day I was scrolling on Facebook, I see a post of Ellen wishing him a happy birthday. This freaked me out once again. I googled his birthday. September 29th. I was shocked. This can't be a coincidence. These spirits visited me and I want to know why. I'm scared, to be honest. Has this happened to anyone here? I'm scared. Advice wanted. All right. My room has a layout in such a way where when I lay down and look at the end of my bed, I can also see the doorway, which leads into a dark hallway with the ceiling at around six or seven feet. This is important. I was home alone on an average Tuesday night. My family was out shopping while I was staying home. I usually stay downstairs and watch TV to pass the time. But at around seven, my family shops late. It was getting dark. And I was getting bored. So I decided to head upstairs and take a nap. But when I passed by the slightly abandoned room across from mine, I got a weird feeling someone was watching me. I ignored it, thinking it was either my two cats or my dog. They liked to play in there and the litter box was in there too. So I went into my room, turned off the light, plopped on my bed, and fell asleep. I didn't have any nightmares or weird dreams, but I did wake up in a cold sweat. I was scared, and that feeling from before was way stronger. I looked at my TV, which was still on. I wasn't surprised because I left it on for a bit of light it doesn't cast light into the hallway. I decided to play my 3DS for a bit. Then I heard something. I don't remember the sound, but I looked into the hallway and I froze. There was a tall girl with a hat. The girl was crouched. She had long hair and I couldn't see her face. She had a dress or a kimono and a hat. I wanted to hide under the covers. She couldn't have moved if I wasn't looking at her. But soon after what felt like an eternity, she went downstairs. I grabbed a baseball bat and ran into the bathroom, 
which was the only room in the house with a lock, and called my family. They had to do a lot of grocery shopping as they told me to call 911. I called, the police checked my house, there was no sign of forced entry. My mom put up cameras around the house. This is when my family checked the footage. The only motion caught was me running to the bathroom. I felt scared walking to the bus stop alone after that. I felt that possible ghost or demon's presence following me. I don't know what to do. I finally decided to post this story online. Finally want to slash need to tell this story. So a while back in March and April, I was at a motel. It was me, my friend, and his girlfriend. They were on the bed. I was sitting on a chair at a desk, but facing the bed toward my friends. There was a mirror on the desk, a big one, and we had the bathroom door open with the light on. So we had better lighting in the room. You could see the bathroom mirror in the desk mirror where I was sitting, but you couldn't see the desk mirror in the bathroom mirror. If you're looking at the bathroom mirror from the desk mirror, I'm being specific as to allow people to make that scene in their mind. I kept seeing, sometimes blatantly, but mostly out of the corner of my eyes, chaotic yet symmetrically moving wisps in the bathroom mirror, cloudy things, small, but almost seemed like they were materializing from them. Both looked right at the bathroom mirror and looked at it from the desk mirror. At one point it looked like a face and was pulsating into existence. Then I saw behind me out of the corner of my eye, and also when I turned around for like ten seconds, a straight-up reaper dude, or like a dementor-looking thing. Like one of those things from Lord of the Rings. I'll never forget it, and it growled at me. As a security guard, I started believing in paranormal stuff. So when I was younger, I didn't really know what to do as a job. Me being naturally a large guy, everyone always joked that I'd make a great security guard. Well, I ended up listening. My job was basically at night going to buildings where the alarm was triggered. Weird stuff happened all the time. But this one really had me creeped out. It was like 12.30 a.m. and my shift had just began. I immediately had to follow up on an alarm in the school. So I went there and first checked the outside. Nothing unusual or weird to see. So safe for me to go inside without calling the police. For those of you who don't know, in an alarm system... You can see certain zones that are triggered. We had them mapped out, so we'd know where to look. Here the alarm went off at the first floor hall. I turned on some lights and walked upstairs. Checked out the alarm sensor and didn't see any dust or something that could have triggered it. My eye spotted a book laying in the middle of the hall. Didn't think too much of it, to be fair. I've seen weirder things than a book. Pick up the book, lay it on a nearby shelf, just before it reset the alarm and I head back out. The moment I sit back in my car, I hear the noise of an alarm being triggered again. I didn't think anything of it, since it's pretty common for sensors to just have, you know, issues. But before I surpassed the sensor, I'd have to go check again. I head upstairs to check the same sensor, and the damn book is laying in the same spot where I first picked it up on the floor. Needless to say, I bolted down, surpassed the alarm system with all risks included, and got the hell out of there. Never told anyone. Years later, I'm talking to a colleague who sounded all panicky at the phone when he started telling the exact same thing happened to him. And believe it or not, at the exact same school, he was terrified. Glad I changed jobs now. Never have to deal with the haunted places anymore. I might actually drop a couple more things on here from what I've seen. A 
I was warned, but I forgot. My work as a security guard. I worked a while in security and always heard my colleagues talk about a haunted school. This was the one school that literally everybody hated to go to because of the creepy stuff happening there. So I started asking questions, but people just answered in short phrases like, Dude, it's just really fucking haunted in there. And you'll see. So actually, a year goes by and I kind of forgot what school they meant. Around 1am the fire alarm triggers falsely in the school which is pretty common. I head over there, turn off the alarm system, and go check the fire system. It was indeed a mechanical error, so usual protocol is where I just call a mechanic. And yeah, we have the night shift emergency kind because fire alarm is kind of high risk. I call dispatch to summon the mechanic, and I sit down in this mega bonker size of a building in the janitor's hall. The one that had all the cameras throughout the school. And this is also where the fire panel was located. I take out my phone and decided to watch a movie while waiting for the guy. So I'm sitting in this little room, but right next to it is the common student room, which is huge. It's a massive open space. It's square, but also kind of goes up multiple floors. Needless to say, it echoes like crazy. I was watching the movie, but my eyes dragged all the time to the cameras, swearing I've seen something change in there all the time when I wasn't looking. I suddenly noticed that on one of the camera screens in the basement, a light is on. Creepy as hell, because in such an old building they surely don't have automatic sensors. So I decided to walk out in the common room and keep an eye on things and listen if I hear something strange. It's absolutely deafening silence. Not even a sound from outside can be heard at this point. Which is one of the more odd things considering the school is in the dead center of a city. The moment I walked and walked back to the janitor's room, I hear a sound so loud that I jump up and froze. It sounded like a table thrown through the school. Imagine the echo it left in this crazy-sized hall. Sometimes you can get a jump scare so bad that the veins in your body tighten so fast that it's actually painful. It was that sort of a moment. I listen in and the second after it becomes quiet for about 10 seconds. I slightly freeze again, but all my body sensors are going off. I'm 100% on, well, I'm just tense as hell. That's when I start hearing everything around me. Footsteps on upper halls, people talking, doors slamming, tables and chairs scratching the floors. The sounds were definitely inside the building and coming from the higher floors. That's it. Fuck it. Even my body tells me at this point it's time to go. Every physical feeling in my body tells me this is unsafe. I rushed to the alarm system and the alarm system was next to a little window that showed the janitor's room. I could see the camera screen and the lights in the basement went bonkers. From turning on and off to going brighter and more dimmed. I don't care at this point about the mechanic who just got called out of bed. I am saving my own ass, it feels like it at this point. I turn on the alarm and drive away. At that moment. The mechanic phones me and says, Hey bud, listen up. You're probably the new guy, but at night, I don't enter that school. And you shouldn't either. That place is haunted like crazy. Even your colleagues don't want to go there at night. That's when I realized that this was the damn school everyone was always talking about. The mechanic wished me a good shift and told me that he was going to go back to sleep. The rest of the night I was surely staying closer to my colleagues. Everyone knew I went there, but no one asked questions about me being all shaken up. I got just one comment. Well, now you know to stay away from there. 
Fortunately, this was not the last time I had to go there, and not the only thing that I experienced there. The Christmas party ended quick, and something tried to lure me. I had the night shift as security. I was head patrol, meaning that I got all the alarm calls from dispatch and have to divide them amongst me and my colleagues. Now, I'm not going to lie. When you hear the names of the school, the first instinct is to, well, give it another colleague, but... The phone rings. Dispatch tells me that the alarm in this particular school is not turned on yet. Some alarm systems have a reminder that it should be turned on after, for example, midnight. It triggers like a little reminder for dispatch on their PC. Now, I'm working the night with a couple of newbies and interns. I worked quite some time there already, so the company trusted me enough to complete stuff with this team. Knowing that newbies would often call for help in the first two minutes they would have arrived there, I decided due to the nature of, you know, just to go by myself. Just a quick hop in, turn on the alarm, and get the hell out of there. I arrive at the building and thank God a sigh of relief when I see the 40 or 50 people dancing upstairs. Some half-drunken people standing below. It's a Christmas party. Knowing that I don't know, or that I don't have to enter the building alone, completely took my worry away. Also, the reason I've never been caught off guard this much. So without even grabbing the keys, I just rushed through the main entrance, being greeted by the janitor. Now, this guy looked sober as could be. So the first thing he says, Well, finally, we've been looking for you for like ten minutes. I get completely puzzled since I literally stepped out of my car and ten minutes ago I was still near the head office. I asked him about this and he says, Well, you've been walking around the school like you couldn't find us. Shouted for us a hundred times. At this point, a very drunk lady walks up to us and starts cheering that the janitor found me. She shouts at the top of her lungs that they can finally stop looking. Multiple people who were roaming the school appeared and heard someone shout, Security! Where are you guys? At this point, I'm well beyond confused. Someone playing a prank on the Christmas party? One of the drunkards? No alarm bells ring yet, so I decided to ask the janitor to take me to the principal off the school. as he sort of listed as a contact person, so I needed his permission to take away the timer on the alarm system. I enter a room full of people. And I'll explain one thing about being a security guard entering a party with drunk people. The first thing you get is jokes. So everybody's laughing and making a chat. Now, I wasn't in a hurry considering that I had just begun my shift and no other alarms really got triggered, so... I'd joke along when suddenly we all get silenced by a deafening shout that says, Security! Now the scary part is, it was my voice. I recognize my own voice very well, since as a hobby I play video games and stream them. I have my voice echoing weakly in my ears, and this was me. Thing is, as I was talking there for a minute, some of the people realized it was voice very similar to mine. The look on their face gave away that it wasn't them playing a joke on me. I've never seen drunk people go sober in under a third of a second until now. Feeling strengthened by having company, I told the janitor to join me. He had all the keys, so that was my excuse for him to walk along. I told him we're going to go check who's doing this. We walk into the hall, and there's where I decided to act like I'm totally fine. I shout at the top of my lungs. We're on the first floor. While I'm at it, I decided to end with a joking comment saying, I am the security guard now. Meanwhile, the principal sobered up so quickly he decided to end the party right there and then. He sent everybody home in under ten minutes. The dude kind of pressured them like crazy. 
The thing is, drunk people usually stretch to go home. Here they went completely willingly and seemingly nervous. Now keep in mind this school is freaking huge. It echoes through the mid-open sections and reverbs on every single hallway on every floor. So whoever shouted in the first place must have heard me. Yet it stayed silent. Which I didn't like, to be honest, because that would make it less likely to be a pranker from the Christmas party. I hear the last people walk out the door, but the janitor is looking for answers. He tells me to check out the school with him. He's afraid that maybe one of the students who caught air about the Christmas party sneaked in and was messing around. We decided to walk up top and go from top to bottom, since I got the time and since I wasn't alone. The backup really gives me a false sense of security. We walked top to bottom since whatever we ran into we could sweep sort of slowly down toward the entry. A little trick against burglars. Give them an exit, and they'll use it. It's kind of nice for our safety, to be honest. So while we're heading upstairs, we hear above us something dropping on top of the floor. We get tense and stop for a second. I decided to shout, Hello, anyone up there? This is security. We're about to close down the building. It goes dead silent again. So we get to the top of the stairs, and at this point, another sound. This time, one floor below us. This is the point where we are convinced that we are not alone. We decide to exchange phone numbers and sweep both floors at the same time. I mean, this janitor wasn't scared. I guess he didn't know about what was going on in the school. Not totally comfortable with the idea of splitting up in such a huge building, I complied anyway. I take the mid-floor section, he takes the top. When he's done, he would walk downstairs and phone me while waiting near the top entry, so we could both sweep the basement. The stairs to the basement were near the main entrance. While we're both doing our own section of the building, I hear all kinds of noises at this point. Not being silenced by our chatter, it suddenly becomes much more clear to me that we're being idiots and should just get the hell out of there. I hear the guy suddenly shout up to me that he's done with the midsection. Not what we agreed to, but sure, I'll come downstairs. Walk to the entry and he's not waiting there. I peek into the basement and I hear him running down the stairs. At this point I walk downstairs and I just catch a glimpse of one of the basement doors shutting behind him while I see kind of through the glass door and he's walking away from me. I want to speed up while my phone starts ringing. At this point I get a little jump scare because common the basement is scary as hell, the non-student part of the school. I answer the phone expecting it to be dispatch or a colleague or something, but nope, it had to be the damn janitor. Hey, I'm done sweeping the midsection. I'm waiting at the entry now. This is what I hear coming through the phone while I'm standing in the basement looking at someone's back slowly walking through the hallway away from me. Holy crap. I'm being lured by something. I bolted upstairs, told him I sweep the basement already, and let's get the fuck out of here. He must have noticed that I was terrified at this point. I was sweating like crazy and stuttering. I never stuttered before in my life, and I was pushing him to be quick. He asked me if I was okay. I told him just not to make the parties here too late. Seems like he understood because looking at him being pale and not asking any questions further, he quickly took the keys and pushed them up to the alarm system. He had a tag on it which turns the alarm system if you kind of hold it near the sensor. The building's old, the alarm system was quite new. It was replaced after a lot of false triggers. We walked outside the building and I have shivers running down my spine. We look up back at the building, and on the top floor, it looks like a figure standing in the window. We didn't see it move. We couldn't be totally certain it was a person. But my last comment was, whatever it is, if it moves, it will trigger the alarm. And at that point, it's a problem for the police.
security guard in a haunted school. The police got involved. The reason why I dared it was summer and a weekend shift. Evening, but still bright outside. Now the evenings and the weekend are much calmer. We had like 10 customers for the whole day and we needed to do a random checkup. And on the rest we were free for the alarms. Three colleagues for 10 customers is a lot. But we had some days where it would just be extremely busy. We had a fuck ton of clients. Now we had multiple shift leaders and one was working this day with me. He was working the main alarm car, the contact for dispatch, and I was his second hand. We're sitting outside the office when he gets a phone call. The third colleague was getting some food, so it was just me and the shift lead. Dispatch gave an alarm at our favorite customer, the damn haunted school. Now there is one more issue with this school. And that is that children who go there often threw bricks through the windows of this school. Yep, the school is in the dead center of a city. But it is really big. On the front side of the school, there's just regular houses. On the back, a small park. On the sides, there's other buildings. I think some companies, from what I remember. The alarm we got multiple detectors, and they all went off in sequence. This usually means that somebody's walking inside. Now, when dispatch sees this, they automatically call the police to join us. I mean, we're not armed, so slightly irresponsible to go without backup in such situations. So the shift lead, a bit of a nut job, gets excited and tells me to join him. Let's go scare some kids. Well, that winds up backfiring. We both take a car and drive to the school. We both park at the front of the building, and when we came there, police were already waiting for us. They had parked their cars at the back of the school in a little park. The reason they waited for us is because we have the keys. The lockdown building was just basically opening the door for them so they could check out what's going on. It's normal that we join them inside, for the simple reason that we often are very familiar with the buildings, especially pretty important for bigger ones too. My shift lead proposes, considering the size of the school, that I take a cop and he takes a cop, and we work through the zones and give alarms. Now the first sensor that went off was an emergency door, which makes it very likely that somebody entered the building. Then it led through some halls, and guess what? Straight into the friggin' basement. Now, I don't know who would be stupid enough to do that, but sure. The plan we had is that we enter the basement near the emergency door. My colleague and a cop enter the basement near the main entrance. The thing is, the emergency door was still closed. Now that it's, well, now that on its own, it's not very strange, I guess. Because if you let go of the door, it'll basically shut itself and lock. That's just how they're built. But the last zone they gave an alarm was in the basement. Basically meaning that somebody's in there where no one's able to go. If the person would have walked back, dispatch would have seen the last zone give alarm to the emergency exit again. So we enter the basement. Me and the cop go down and walk entirely through. We checked every freaking corner. Absolutely empty. The thing is, we never ran into my colleagues and the other cop. So we end up on the other side, back up near the main entrance. At this point, the colleague from the cop asks over the radio where we are. We said we walked entirely through and ended up at the main entrance, basically reverting the question where they are. They were in the basement. They only entered from the same side we did. When we walked downstairs and they started moving to the main entrance via the ground floor level, to also go down the stairs, they turned around and followed us. They explained later that they heard a shout for them to come back. We never shouted anything. So we wait near the main entrance and we hear a loud as hell scream. It was definitely inside the building. Remember when I told my colleague that they were a nut job? 
Well, that's what I told the cop. I said this was just my colleague being a pranker. The cop couldn't laugh about it, though. But right when I said that, my colleague and the cop came upstairs asking what the hell that scream was. And that scream definitely didn't come from the basement. At this point, the cops freak out and call in for backup. Now, in the Netherlands, when something like this happens, they call in the whole damn circus. We're talking like eight cops and kind of like a shitload of them. A captain or something, it would be in English, I guess. But when they suspect somebody's in a building, they're also bringing a police dog. Or waiting outside on command of the cops till everyone arrived. The dog is here, so everyone who's there is posted into a different section of the school. We're talking everyone. Like at the turning point of the stairs, at the emergency door, at the back door, at the main entrance. I was positioned in the most left stairwell turning point. I was standing like in between floors. So I could see a cop below near the main entrance and a cop above in the hallway near some of the other doors. Felt just fine right there. At this point, we're required to be silent since the policeman with the dog takes the lead from here on. He shouts through the building that there's a dog about to be sent in and you'd better make yourself known and surrender. Well, we got a response. A bang loud enough for everybody to hear it, but no one to specify where it came from. Now I'm standing on the left side and I can see the colleague near the main entrance kind of looking surprised outside. We're standing there for about five minutes in dead silence until we get called back. What was going on? The dog refused to enter the building and put up one hell of a fight with its owner not to cross the main entrance. The dog knew. Well, that led to a change of plans. First, listen. If we hear anything, then spread out through the building. Find that person. At this point, my shift lead already came walking close to me, softly mentioned, They ain't gonna find shit. Not here. Two cops stand in the big open space, the student common room just listening. Everyone is dead quiet, but we hear a fuck ton of noise. Cops kept asking their colleagues outside if there really wasn't someone outside messing around. But outside, they didn't hear anything. The thing is, with so, so many people, you feel a lot more secure, and I was just happy with the school being searched top to bottom. Fun fact, one cop found a hidden room made by students, assuming with help of teachers, who wanted to make an escape room. The cop had to ask for help to get out again. Now from the outside comes a call over the radio. There's two cops at either end of the top floor, but in the middle is a person walking. Both cops rush to the middle only to meet each other, but no one else. Every cop in the building rushes upstairs at this point, only to hear a loud bang downstairs again. At this point, cops are starting to admit that we are pretty much chasing air. Their next idea was to basically turn on the alarm system and wait. If the person would move, the alarm would trigger again, right? Well, it didn't. It stayed completely quiet. The cops basically said we got to do more, or that they had more to do, rather, and that they were headed off. If the alarm triggers, we'll make sure at all times a car is nearby. My colleague, however, wants to go back inside, because we're all headed out, the plan to return back in, we just left all inside doors open and unlocked. So here we go, just the two of us now. I had a set of keys for my car, and he had too, and, well, we decided to rush and do it as fast as possible. We walk inside, and for two seconds, we turned off the alarm and we stand in the entry when another loud-as-hell scream sounds through the school. My colleague has never been this quick with turning on an alarm system and now took a big leap getting outside again. Me following in his footsteps. That scream felt like it was right in her face. Felt like it meant it, like you are definitely not welcome here. 
We left all the in-between doors open, well knowingly that the customer is phoning dispatch tomorrow to complain about that, and we didn't care at all. We spent another 20 minutes in front of the main entrance just trying to listen through the front door. The occasional loud bangs and screams coming through the glass door ended up sending us off. I haven't been here in a long time after that. Remember what I mentioned in an earlier post that I'm not sending interns here? Well, from that point I did. But it ended up biting me back on the ass. The intern messed up, but I'm back at school. I did a lot of nighttime shifts back because it was good money. I had shift lead once again and was working with three newbies. Totally fine and to be honest, pretty great guys. The night starts off calm until around 2.30 a.m. we start getting more alarm triggers. We split the alarms evenly and worked through them pretty fast. Needless to say, I was impressed by them. They worked max two months for us but worked like experienced people. Now after they tried so hard, I told them that I would fix one more alarm a bit further away while they could head back to the office. Customers were done, and alarms were mostly done. Then the call comes in. My absolutely favorite school. You know the one. The alarm triggers one single zone. It was close to the entry. Now, I am at some serious distance while they could, you know, be there in about 10 minutes. I decided to phone one of them and let them figure out who was going to do it. There was one of them with an extra large desire to prove himself all the time. So he reports back to me that he's on his way. In a calm manner, he tells me he's going to fix it and isn't worried about the ghost stories that leak through from the other colleagues. He would phone me once he was done. Half an hour goes by, my phone rings. The first thing he tells me is that he's so sorry, but he messed up big time. We work with instructions about the building. And here it's clearly written, never leave the keys in the janitor's room. If that door closes while the keys are inside, you can't enter again. This is a separate set of keys from the ones that we have in our cars. And guess what? He left the keys inside. It wouldn't be much of a problem except for the fact that the janitor needs these keys in the morning to open certain parts of the school. So here we are. I send an intern and, yeah, I have to go back and try to fix it. Now I'm talking with him on the phone, also explaining that I understand he did it by accident, but that it's not the end of the world. He's on the other hand freaking out. And, well, I was teaching him about the keys, but that really wasn't what was going on. He kept telling me to hurry up because he really didn't like it in there. I pull up and he's standing near the main entrance. I knew why, but didn't bother asking anything myself this time. I remembered from the start of the night shift that he was drinking from a plastic soda bottle. Now, we're in a school, so... We have access to scissors. I'll not go into details, but a little trick I learned in security is that a plastic bottle and a scissor work magic for opening doors. I told him we got to look for a pair of scissors. We started wandering around, which is why I ended up here again. We checked some classrooms, when suddenly we notice a window slightly opened. You can't open or enter from the outside. But still, something was close. We were considering wind or insects or other stuff from outside. It's kind of a nightmare for alarm systems. While I close the window, the intern is digging through the teacher's desk, ultimately finding a pair of scissors. We head toward the door, and that thing slams shut instantly. Our first response feeling backed up because, well, we're with just the two of us, rushing to the door and slamming it wide open, only to startle ourselves again when the door slammed the wall. Nothing, and I mean absolutely nothing, was hearable, seeable, or noticeable on the hallway. 
The intern, obviously shaken now, fully admits it's time to get out of there. How's my dog? He's got big ears. They flap very loudly. I tell him, and we head back to the entrance and jam open that janitor's door. We're with the two of us, and while I was open, he's on the lookout. I mean, I felt watched from behind there, so... It was a logical step to make him have my back. Luckily, this time I managed to open the front door rather quick. Yeah, he's not the first intern to do this, and I bolted inside and the keys are nowhere to be found. I turn around and this dumbass fishes the damn keys out of his pocket. I wanted to kill him. He, on the other hand, is now absolutely terrified. He's 100% convinced that he left the keys on the table and looked through the window before even calling me. He was certain that they were in there. I'm annoyed, but I decide to let it go. While we stand there, he says he heard something. I didn't this time. I was mid-sentence when he stopped me. At this point, a usual eerie feeling creeps up on us there, and we realize it's time to go. A loud screeching sound echoes throughout the school, and we can see on the cameras the lights in the basement turn on, bright as hell. We rush toward the exit while hearing very close by a door slam shut again somewhere. We start rushing like crazy when suddenly we both get the horrible feeling that something is racing toward us. We both hear some freakishly loud and weird grunt. This is where we decided to screw the alarm system. Didn't turn it on, we just rushed outside. For about 10 minutes we tried to gather our courage to head back inside for like 10 seconds just to turn on this damn alarm. But every time we wanted, we heard some loud stuff inside, weird shouts or grunts or bangs, even knocks. We eventually muster up the courage and bolt inside. We turn on the system and, in record time, go back outside. Just before we shut the door, we hear the loudest bang of the night. We made it and we're done. We stand outside. The intern is done with this. He is swearing and making it clear that he'll never go inside here again. Well, that made the two of us. We were sent off by something. Three loud knocks seemed to come from above us, and we're outside. We both looked up and see a freakishly tall figure standing top floor. We rushed to the cars, and that was, seriously, the last time I've been there. Greetings, curious minds, from the mystical corridors of Paranormal M. Subscribe and turn on notifications to be part of our latest exploration into the unexplained. Get ready for a mind-expanding adventure that challenges the boundaries of belief. And before you do, drop a comment and help us with the algorithm. I need help. A hundred and seventeen female. Wow. Have no idea what to do. The last month has been filled with fear and paranoia. I had this incident around a month back. I don't know what time in the night this happened, but I'm certain that it was in the AM. I woke up with this feeling of dread and fear. My room was lit a dark blue from my LED lights. Near the door to my room stood my mom. I called out to her quietly. As she approached the foot of my bed, slowly, it became evident that it was not my mom. Only it looked like her. Her head began to tilt slowly as she stared at me. I moved to the foot of my bed to kick her away, but my foot went through her. She disappeared and reappeared at the side of my bed and began approaching me closer. As quickly as she appeared, she disappeared. I told my dad about it, but he said it was just a nightmare. So I pretend like I didn't feel, well, I pretend like it didn't feel real. Until that same day my friend, an 18-year-old female, 
we were driving around. Now, I've always known she was a medium, as we're both paranormal investigators. However, this really cemented this. I didn't tell her anything about these, well, the appearance of these things. But her eyes widened and she quickly drove out of the neighborhood that we were in. She was repeating herself, saying, We have to get out of here. She later described exactly what was there with me in my room, from the clothes to the height. That night we went to a Catholic church and prayed. I've been praying every night since and haven't been able to have the lights off. Everything was quiet until the last five days. Five nights ago, I froze in my bed. I was laying on my stomach and felt a hand press on my shoulder. I couldn't move, but the same sense of dread filled me. Four nights ago, I was laying on my side when I felt something brush my hair out of my face. Once again, I couldn't move, but... Three nights ago, I was again laying on my side when I felt someone laying behind me. Frozen in fear and dread, the last two nights have been sleepless. Even last night, I cried to God, begging for protection. Does anyone know what this thing is, or how I can protect myself? Ghost encounter in my hotel and bath, UK, last night. I'll preface this by saying this was not my first encounter with a ghost or spirit. This shit always freaks me out. I don't know if I'm more receptive to it because I grew up in a haunted house. Maybe I'm unlucky and, well, I'd appreciate it if the spirits would leave me alone. Okay, so last night was our third night in Abbey Hotel in Bath, UK. At some point in the night, I felt someone get out of bed, so I looked back, which was to my right, at the bed to see if it was my four-year-old, and they might maybe be needing help to go to the toilet. He was fast asleep, so I looked left toward the direction the person was moving to see that it was my husband the shadow was too small, almost like a child, and walking toward my baby's travel cot and pack and play, and again looked back at the bed again to double check if it wasn't my son or husband, and both were fast asleep. I looked back again and it was gone. The shadow looked exactly like a person in the dark, but they were too short to be my husband and too tall to be my son. A bit freaked out, but I decided to try to chalk it up to not being fully awake, or so I told myself, because I really wanted to get some sleep and not freak myself out. Later in the night, I'm a bit restless, and all of a sudden a woman or a girl's voice shouts in my ear from behind, opposite direction of my son and husband. Something I think it wasn't an actual phrase, almost a jingle. A jingle or something else repetitive like they were just testing to see if I could hear them. I grabbed a pillow, put it over my head, and pretended to go back to sleep, never opening my eyes. If it was a ghost, I wasn't trying to give them any reason to believe I heard them. I was freaked out for the rest of the night, but fortunately or unfortunately, my one-year-old woke up a bit later and couldn't go back to sleep for hours so my husband was awake with me. I told him about it in the morning, but he doesn't believe in these things. He's always dismissive, so his response was, okay, so you have some vivid dreams, so now you're just going to read about it instead. I did ask the hotel receptionist in the morning, but he wasn't aware of any ghosts specifically at the hotel. But of course, the building is over 500 years old, and there's a lot of hauntings in that area of Bath. The Paper Pad Monster 
Here are a few anecdotes from living in my childhood home, which I now believe to be haunted. Nobody else in my family experienced anything this vividly, but we all mostly agree it was haunted now. I grew up in a little coastal town in Connecticut with a lot of Native American history. As a kid, my dad would tell me that our house was built on a quote-unquote, as I'm sure you're all ready for, on an Indian burial ground, which I never believed because it sounded made up to be just spooky, but my dad isn't the most truthful person either. Regardless, I had some strange experiences in this house that I can't figure out to this day. I used to sleepwalk a lot in this house, to the extent that my parents needed to lock our doors and windows at night to prevent me from roaming outside. My mom recalls multiple instances of waking up in the middle of the night to me fully asleep playing tag with nobody else there, or playing with Barbies while completely unconscious. There was also an instance where, while I was sleepwalking, I took raw eggs out of the fridge and hid them around the house like I was setting up an Easter egg hunt or something. I don't recall these things personally, but I do remember waking up sometimes in the middle of the night with a full sprint going down the hallway and being very confused. I would also hear voices at night. They would keep me awake a lot. Sometimes it was just my name being whispered repeatedly from another room. But there was this recurring instance of this thing that I called the paper pad monster. It would be this low whisper that would increasingly get louder, just monotonously whispering the words. Paper pad, paper pad, paper pad, over and over. I would follow the voice sometimes, and it always seemed to come from a specific corner of my parents' bedroom. They would be asleep while I was experiencing this, and always chalked it up to me having an overactive imagination come morning. I don't have any explanation for this, but the memories still freak me out. The voices weren't overtly menacing or anything, but scary in the sense that I had no idea who or what it was, or how to make it stop. I lived most of my childhood in the house until we moved when I was ten. These encounters stopped completely. I didn't even think these memories were at all unusual until I started becoming interested in paranormal stuff as an adult. In my late twenties I did some cursory research on my old town, and sure enough, the rumors about living on a Native American burial ground did end up being true after all. Look up the Nahantic Tribe Burial Ground, spelled N-E-H-A-N-T-I-C. If you'd like any more information on this town, and my old neighborhood that is. The tribe's land was sold to developers in the late 1800s, and construction sites were digging up skeletal remains as recently as 1988. I have no idea what to make of any of this, well, stuff, still but I'll never forget the paper pad voice till the day I die and the guilt of living on the tribe's sacred land, albeit unknowingly, still haunts me. I won't forget the paper pad either. I think the spirit is attached to me. so I moved in with my girlfriend and her parents. She tells me a few months later about all the paranormal experiences that they've had, but they're light spirits, nothing dark and heavy. She lived there her whole life. It's not even an old, scary house. It was probably built in the 90s, and it sits in a neighborhood in a busy area near a highway. She tells me it's all okay, and they tell it to leave them alone, and tells me all about the things that she's seen and her mom chimes in and her sister. Anyways, the first time I hear a sort of flicking and scratching under my pillow 
followed by constantly messing with stuff around the room. These were the two main things, and it happened almost every night. I'm typically scared of these things. I feel it in my body, and I freeze up no matter if I'm really scared or not. It's like instinct to me. My girlfriend is fine, barely ever gets scared, and if she does, I should be too. After a while, I felt it was messing with me, doing things under my pillow like the flicking shit and waking me up. My girlfriend has only heard scratching. When I told her about it, she just says, there's always something under the bed, so nonchalantly. I don't know, just something feels off. They've done rituals and sage burnings to send them off, quote-unquote, or to quote-unquote cleanse. The worst night was a week before we moved. I woke up to what I thought was a noise of someone's voice. I thought, oh well, whatever. Maybe it was in my dream. I would typically have lucid dreams. Then I sat awake for a few minutes and heard it again. It was a loud, woo coming from someone under my bed. Shut up, dog. <laughs> it sounded like it was trying to say something, but didn't have enough energy to get it out. I felt it was my collecting energy, or it was perhaps collecting energy off my scaredness. And I'm not very connected to my energy as my girlfriend's family. I would consider them hippies in a way, but anyways. Girlfriend and I move an hour away, she thinks it feels clean, not heavy. I try to tell myself the same. There's just something about our room that makes me scared at night. Her room was nothing malevolent, but I feel my anxiety is heightened because of it. I'm scared of the dark for the first time in my life, and I hate being alone. I turn on every light, but last night I heard the scratching under my pillow. She never hears anything anymore, but the noises at the old house would start as soon as she went into her sleep cycle. If it was raking her longer than 20 minutes to fall asleep. Raking her. Anyway, I would notice the room felt light and calm. If she passes out, I would sense I wasn't the only one awake. Overall, I'm terrified. I'm lost. I don't know how to cope with this. I just want it gone. Ghost pulled off my Duna. I used to live in a haunted house where many unexplained things would happen. I would sleep on the couch in the lounge room because my bedroom was abnormally icy cold, and I worked out later why it was always colder than any other part of the house. It was because it was a room that a young man had died in. One night, I was up late, and he had just turned off the TV. I had just been trying to fall asleep for about an hour. The house is riddled with termites and rotten floorboards caused by both termites and mold, and the house was very old and would creak eerily at all hours. This one night, the creaking was unusual and sounded just like slow footsteps slowly making its way into the kitchen next door and moving toward the lounge. It sounded too familiar and exactly like I had described. The kitchen door... just slowly creaked open, and then more creepy slow footsteps proceeded. My heart began racing and the hair all over my body began to stand up. Then I heard the footsteps outside the lounge room door, which was next door to the dining room adjacent to the kitchen from where the kitchen slowly would open, making slow creaking noises. The lounge room doors are made of glass, and the footsteps stopped outside them. Then I heard the slow, squeaky sound of the lounge room door handle being ever so slowly pushed down. And it was then that I was thinking that it was a ghost. I hid under my Donna with my eyes ever so slightly peeking out over the top of the Donna. 
the footsteps stopped, and then I slowly fell asleep when about 15 minutes later I was woken up by the feeling of being cold when I noticed that the Donna, which was covering my entire body, was slowly being pulled down over my body and was now down past my knees. I wasn't imagining this, and I was scared temporarily when I rolled onto my side, grabbed hold of the Donna, and pulled it over the top of my body. I quickly opened my eyes partially to see what happened, to be a tall, dark outline of a man's body, which I knew was our resident ghost. I wasn't scared. After five or so minutes, I opened my eyes again to see what looked exactly like a pair of feet and runners, and they were large and they were walking away and out of the lounge room. I chose not to do anything instead of falling asleep, only to be reminded the next day upon waking by the kitchen door and lounge room door both being open when I had shut them both the night before. Can anyone out there tell me what a Donna is, or a Duna? I think there may be something in my new apartment. My boyfriend and I moved into our apartment in the last nine months or so. There have been plenty of things that have really put me off. One of the big ones. Our bedroom connects straight to the bathroom, and due to connection issues with the router for some reason in the bathroom closet, we usually have the doors open or cracked. I was sitting in our bed with a show on and couldn't shake off this feeling. I felt like something was watching me and I looked over to the bathroom door which was ajar slightly. The bathroom pitch black since it has no windows and the light was off. In the space between the door and the door jam, where the hinges are, I saw something move. Thinking it was maybe an experience and I was just being crazy, I kept staring. There was a lighter colored shape in the crack of the door that seemed like skin in the dark. I was staring and trying to make out what I was seeing, and the shape in the door crack moved back and forth slightly, and then faded like it was moving back into the dark. Once I could move again, I jumped off the bed and booked it to the living room where my boyfriend was and told him. He checked the bathroom and lightly teased me and told me it must have just been a trick of the light. I tried to believe him, but it lasted so long. I've seen things out of the corner of my eye before, and other light tricks, and this wasn't like that. It was like I was seeing something real and physical and trying to make out details in the dark. This was a month or two ago and I genuinely couldn't shower with the door shut for a month. What happened tonight just adds to it. Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas to those that celebrate. We have to be up early tomorrow to make sure we fit all of our family time in before both of our extended families, and after last-minute shopping today, I was exhausted. I was watching Elf in bed and trying to stay awake until the end. But I was so happy and thinking about Christmas time and watching my favorite Christmas movie that I fell asleep super hard. What happened next is a series of inception-like dreams. I quote-unquote woke up to my boyfriend in bed next to me, and I could feel his heat to my left, toward the bathroom in real life. He was way more on my side of the bed than usual, and I remember thinking something sweet and sappy until I heard the sound of my boyfriend in the living room talking on his headset. It was just a fuzzy dream thought of, weird, I can feel him next to me, but I can't hear him out there. I was half awake in my dream until a much louder thought interrupted. It felt like it wasn't my thought, like somebody yelled in my head, that's not him next to you. Suddenly there was a piercing ringing in my ears, especially my right one. I felt completely awake and panicked, with the ringing still in my ear, and lunged toward the end of the bed, but as soon as my feet touched the floor, I was w like waking up again, in my original spot, and I could feel something next to me. 
I sat up this time, but felt like I couldn't move my body. I was fighting something invisible that was holding me down. I screamed his name and heard my voice in this dream, but he didn't hear me. Then I woke up again. Same thing, but I couldn't move at all and my voice was harder to push out when I screamed. I woke up again, paralyzed. Couldn't even scream. Then I was standing on a loft I've never been in, and an apartment doesn't have one. And there were some plants on a coffee table in front of me. I was talking to someone, and they said, Something's still not right. This isn't real. And the plants started bowing toward me with a dark gust of wind, and the person sort of faded into shadows. There was a loud wind sound, and everything got darker and darker until it was black. I could only hear the wind. I woke up again, breathing hard, and alone in bed, still paralyzed, and knew that I wasn't awake yet. I knew I had to break out of this loop, so I just started trying to scream and scream and focus on my breathing, but I couldn't get sound out. And when it didn't work, I was trying hard to close and open my eyes and override the thought dream body. I was trying to reach my real body. I think it worked because I finally opened my eyes and sat up in real life and in my real bed. I didn't feel any presence anymore, but I was shaking hard and even checked my phone to make sure it was real and I saw the time. I was still shaken up, even after sitting with my boyfriend in the living room for a while. I don't know if this is paranormal or if the bathroom thing can be explained. Our apartments are very new, so I'm sure if someone died here, they would have disclosed it. Washington State. I was in a great mood falling asleep, haven't watched or read anything creepy. I'm not sure what to make of this and would love any input. Story time from years ago. Intro. I'm 23. I've been interested and a believer of paranormal since I was about 14, I think. This happened when I was, well, about 10 to 14, I can't exactly remember. I was living with my parents in Stockbridge, Georgia. Into the event or story or whatever you want to call it. From the time period, I never really believed in ghosts, skinwalkers, and blah, blah. I watched Pet Cemetery, The Purge. We lived in a three-bed, two-bath house. This was in Massachusetts and Pennsylvania, and I worked a lot. It got to the point where I'd be home alone at night, up till like four or five in the morning. So the only time that I would see them would be before school, until the weekend. There was one night in the winter where it snowed. It wasn't really snow. Instead of snow, we got ice. It was about eight or nine at night, and I was watching Adventure Time. Probably wasn't the best for my eyes, but I was watching it in the pitch black dark. As I was watching, I saw a black dot zoom past the TV. I thought nothing of it, thinking the TV was just being stupid. For some reason, my brain said, Hey, look at the bottom left of the TV. So I looked there, and what I can remember, I saw almost fingers, but they weren't. It was like I could see an outline of fingers and still see the TV. It was like it was transparent. I blinked, and they were gone. I thought to myself, Okay, yeah, maybe I'm tired, whatever, it's the weekend. As I continued watching, I got really cold and felt really uncomfortable. Like someone was in the room with me. At the corner of my eyes, I saw some movement. So I darted my head over and happened to see, like, darkness fade away. I thought nothing of it and just assumed my eyes were adjusting to the dark from the light, kind of like a lens on a camera. I watched for a bit longer and two rolls around. So I start to pack it in, turn off the TV and start going to the stairs. As I'm walking, it feels like someone is behind me. I can feel the footsteps on the floor, so I stop. 
When I stopped, the vibrations of the floor continued, but got slower. I turned around, then they completely stopped. As I look around in the dark, still stationary, I happen to feel this heavy weight on my chest, as if the wind got knocked out of me. I was starting to freak out a bit, but wasn't showing it. Kind of like, what the fuck? Guess I need to go to the doctor. When Ma or Pa have time to take me. I turn around and continue toward the stairs. Out of nowhere, a big burst of adrenaline kicks in and I hear what sounds like a full-on sprinting behind me. I did not stop. I hauled ass up the stairs. Once I got upstairs, I looked down. Nothing. At this point, I thought I was delusional and sleep-deprived and beyond. Until I felt a tug on my shirt from behind me. I whipped around and absolutely nothing. At this point, I thought it was a joke, so I started saying, Hello, in the dark. While something replied right next to my ear, I heard a deep gargled whisper reply with, Hey. After I heard it, I froze, heart pounding out of my chest. Then I felt a long blow of cold air in the same ear, which made me basically run into my, bath, my bedroom and hit the lights and close my door. I was fully awake and at this point three was rolling around at which point I heard tapping and light scratching on the other side of the door. I turned my bedroom TV on, blaring volume the whole house. Hell, probably the whole neighborhood could hear it. At some point I calmed down, turned the TV down, and I had to pee. At this point, it's been an hour. I was like, okay, so my imagination's getting the best of me. Pee, then bed. The minute I opened the door, I was met with a tall, dark, white-eyed figure looking at me from where the access to the attic is. I immediately shut my door and pissed out the window. I did not sleep that night at all. I told Pa about it when he got home, too. He slapped me upside my head and said I watched too many horror movies. I told my friends about it, and they said I should call 911. So I figured maybe I'm just crazy. A few days pass, nothing happens. So I figured, okay, I'm sleep deprived. Week goes by and Saturday hits. I'm home alone playing Xbox with my door wide open. I had an Xbox Connect and I was actually setting up the Connect part of it for just dance. I'm getting it set up for my figure and everything when all of a sudden the dots start hovering over something beside me. From my height at the time, I'd have to say this thing was eight feet tall. Thought to myself that, well, this thing that messed with me last week, if so, why? I turned off the connect and just decided if it exists, then we can coexist, and started playing Battlefield 3. I then feel something hit my beanbag chair. I looked around for what it was and found it was my baseball. I thought to myself, if this aimed any higher, then it would have hit my head. I got angry and screamed at the top of my lungs, leave me alone, whatever the heck you are. I guess I didn't like that. My door slowly shut. My TV fell over. All my tapestries got yanked off the wall. As all that started happening, I just sat down in my beanbag chair and just sat there. Eventually, it all stopped. I told Ma about it when she got home, and she was stunned. But I guess not entirely shocked. Ma helped me fix my room and set my TV back up, and then told me about this thing messing with me. She told me when she was younger, her and her friends played with a Ouija board in her room, which was now currently my room. She said whatever it was comes and goes as it pleases, as it has even messed with her in the mornings and late at nights when she's off, when Pa works, not asleep. She even gave it a name, Mickey. She said as long as I don't acknowledge him, he will leave me be. After that, things kept happening, though. But they weren't as intense. Instead of my ball getting thrown, it got rolled. Instead of being chased up the stairs, I was followed. Instead of things getting yanked, it got brushed against. 
April 19th, 2015, when moved, Mickey did not follow. However, ever since my experience with Mickey, I've been obsessed with the paranormal. As it's happened to me, the good experiences, the bad, with just the one entity, I want to try more, experience more, and interact with more. I refer to Mickey as a likable and respectful demon. As when Ma told me about him, I researched paranormal and found that it could have been a hell of a lot worse, honestly. I hope you guys enjoyed this tale from the past, as it's a true experience and got me to believe in the paranormal and start to actually do my own investigations and interactions with entities. I'm not much of a storyteller. Sure hope that if you guys get a demon, then hopefully it's just as chill as Mickey. The property I live on is haunted. I've lived on this property since I was two years old. When I was little, I thought it was normal to play with people who weren't really there. I guess I chalked it up to being what imaginary friend meant. As I got older, I stopped playing so much. I got tired and was a typical moody teen. But when I never mentally stopped thinking of the people, I played with the spirits and ghosts. I never told anyone about this. Here's where things get weirder. I'm mentally ill, and I experience hallucinations. I also have a form of dissociative identity disorder. At the time, I was the only personality, and I had just started recovering memory of being a system. Trauma reasons. So when I started hallucinating figures and feeling people in my head, I thought it was just the system reforming. Hmm. Around the same time, my older brother's life partner came to visit. She sees an FBI psychic fairly often, apparently. And for years, the psychic has been asking if she knew of a specific property. You may see where this is going. I do not. Sure enough, the property they'd been talking about for years is the same one I grew up on and live on still. A fun fact about the area we live, we're only a few miles away from the old asylum. It's appropriately spooky feeling, even if it looks normal. So, the FBI psychic and my sister-in-law ask to do a cleansing on the property. So the whole family ends up working out where the corners of the property are and bringing containers of salt there. Sister-in-law warns us that we might feel weird that night especially as they do the cleansing. That night, I get really, really sick. I sleep badly. I have hot flashes and nightmares. When I wake up in the morning, I feel lighter and emptier than I've ever felt before. I no longer felt or hallucinated figures. I spent the entire morning trying to wrap my head around the idea that my brain was haunted. We later heard from the psychic and my sister-in-law that our property became a place of solace for spirits from the asylum. They helped the spirits move on to heal. Later, my sister-in-law came and found me. She told me that the spirits I played with as a kid wanted me to know that they'd come back one day to say goodbye properly. She also told me that my biological maternal grandma was watching over me. But she also tried to kidnap me when she was alive, so I mostly ignored that part. It was really nice to know that people I played with were real, that they came here to feel safe, that they cared about me as much as I adored them as a kid. Also, I now have the best wild story to tell at parties. No one can beat. Yeah, my brain was haunted for a bit. Something sleeping next to me. I'll start by saying that I'm a believer. But still, something like this might be experienced only once in a lifetime. So I'm willing to share it with you. 
when I was 18 years old, went to my grandparents' house in the countryside. I enjoyed going to when I was a child there, but there was no one living in it as when my great-grandparents died, but my aunt came also to take care and look after me. The house is pretty big, the rooms too. The room where this happened is maybe ten meters long or two and a half meters large. My cousin came the first night to say hello and spend the night with me. He was much younger, like fourteen years old. I slept on the edge of the room and him on the other edge. That night I couldn't sleep because a cat just... Brow bugs from where chicken were staying. Hmm. And those bugs were biting me all night. Hmm. So in the morning I couldn't wake up early. And while trying to wake up in the morning I heard my cousins talk with my aunt in the kitchen. And he was swearing to hear that something was there next to him all night. Of course, nobody believed him. When I woke up, the only question that mattered to me was if there was no bugs in that place, and he said no. The next night, slept in the exact same place. At a certain time in the night, I was asleep, but tried to turn, and felt that something was behind me, as if a person is sleeping next to you and you just can't turn because they're too close. I was terrified and couldn't even turn around to see what's there, and couldn't get back to sleep either, so I stayed awake till sunrise, and at that moment felt like something was getting up without too much noise. It was going toward the door. The door was closed and stood closed, but had a somewhat of a big opening under it, let's say two centimeters. Then I woke up too and went out. I think I received a voicemail from my deceased grandfather. I just want to start this off by saying I'm writing this to get it out, because me and my family aren't too sure what to make of it. So this started on the morning of Christmas Eve. I woke up to hear my mother crying, being consoled by my dad. I ran out to see what was happening, and my dad told me that my granddad had passed away. Now, my granddad was a dearly loved member of the family. He was so amazing and always made us laugh. He had a heart of gold, so his passing on Christmas Eve really had us all shocked. We've all cried together. However, now we're trying to keep ourselves busy to take our minds off of what happened. A few days after my granddad passed, I went to visit my nan nan and auntie. This is where the story starts. My dad drove me there, and there was no one else in the car but me and my dad and my little brother, who's three years old. He drove me there without any issues, and I went to spend time with my nan nan. When I was at her house, I checked my phone, and I saw that I had a voicemail. However, no one had called me. I had zero missed calls, and I even checked my call history. I decided not to listen to it till I got home. I spent a few hours more at my nan's house before leaving. The night continued normally, and then I remembered that I still hadn't listened to the voicemail, so I decided to listen to it. Placing the phone to my ear and the voicemail begins to play. It was four minutes long, which was strange enough, however, I still listened. It was hard to make out what it was, but then I noticed my voice and my dad's voice through the broken up sound. I didn't think anything of it at first. Until around 52 seconds into the voicemail, I heard a voice very close to the speaker. It sounded broken up slightly, but my stomach dropped when I made out what the voice said. Hello, Bobby. Now, it might not sound strange to anybody else. However, to me and my family, it was strange as that was my granddad, what he would always call us, especially me. I pulled the phone away from my ear and instantly saved the voice message. I didn't tell anyone. Though, in case they thought I was lying or something, the next day I told my older sister and got her to listen to the voicemail. She instantly heard it, and her eyes widened. We listened around five more times before my parents came home and I got them to listen to it too. They all heard it at the same time. They were all shocked by it and didn't really know what to make of it. 
At first, we thought it may have been my dad who accidentally called me. However, his phone was connected to the car, and he was playing his music through it. The voicemail also would have had to have come from inside the car to even pick up a conversation. We're all slightly confused and don't know what to make of it. Anybody else believe almost all paranormal phenomena is linked together? I saw Bigfoot as a child and would have told you for most of my life that it was a flesh and blood creature. But after going down the UFO rabbit hole, I found myself genuinely believing that most encounters from ghosts to cryptids, UFOs, and everything in between are actually our brains trying to make sense out of experiencing some kind of interdimensional being. The Ariel School incident is a prime example as what each child saw was informed by their own cultural beliefs and worldview. Many Bigfoot encounters have strange lights and orbs, and even instances of them seemingly vanishing behind an impossibly thin tree. If you've seen Interstellar, that puts forth what I believe most ghosts are in some way, as in something a dimension above us interacting within our dimension. I don't know what subreddit to put this on, as people seem to be unusually vehemently disagreeing, but, or usually vehemently in disagreement, I believe they meant, or they think I'm just taking the piss out of them. Saw the Grim Reaper. Two days from now is the year that passed of the death of a close friend. He died in a famous plane crash. I don't know if I could call it paranormal or anything, but the incident that happened to me was two weeks before his death. We went on this trip to do bird watching. We planned on doing LSD in the evening that day. All five of us took a dose of what I believe to be 200 UG. I don't know how much about this stuff, but it was my third time, and it was his first. Also turned out to be his last. Trip was a blast. It was later at 3 a.m. that scared the shit out of me, and it still does. During the trip, something about him was just off. He was lost in his thoughts sometimes and making weird faces. We didn't mind much as it was his first time. At like 2.30, we headed to our room. There were two rooms to accommodate five of us. There were two beds in the room where all five of us stayed to talk. Effects were wearing down, or well, sort of off or down now, and we turned off the lights. It wasn't pitch black as the street lights outside were lit. My friend was beside me in the same bed as we were making jokes and laughing uncontrollably. He was quiet the whole time. As he was beside me, I turned my head and saw this thing. I couldn't make out if it was him or if it was next to him, but it was this entity, a dark figure like a foot taller than us. I saw it less and I felt it more, like it was looking through me and I felt it and I said right there, I think there's death beside me. Guys on the other bed laughed. But the one next to me was still quiet and I froze up. I still could feel that thing beside me. I didn't want to be there and I was totally frozen. We went to bed after some time and I couldn't sleep and I waited till morning. In the morning I convinced myself it was the drug playing tricks on me. Only after two weeks, I believe what I saw was not some hallucination, but death itself. Awakened from a dream by a groaning, rotten apparition. A chilling encounter in my bedroom. I was asleep, taking a nap and dreaming. Suddenly the dream space felt off, as if being controlled by an external force. 
The dream had a plot I was aware of, but then it began to unfold in unexpected ways. Next, I found myself awake, my head on the pillow looking toward my bedroom door. Upon closer inspection, there was a woman in a white gown staring straight ahead, but not at me. Initially, I noticed her short hair. Then the erratic movements of her head and arms caught my attention. Her head would tilt quickly, almost unnaturally, as if she had ticks occurring every few seconds. With each movement, an afterimage of the body part lingered in its previous position. This definitely unnerved me, but curiosity overcame my fear. After about eight seconds, she slowly turned her head to look at me, aware that I could see her. Her features were startlingly clear, resembling a rotten visage as she had died, been buried, and worms had consumed her face evoking the realistic terror of a zombie far more vivid than those in Thriller. She continued to stare at me, tilted her head almost like she was puzzled, and began to hear a groaning sound, zombie-like. I realized I was paralyzed, unable to move, and I thought to myself, I want to wake up now. The eerie part was, upon waking, my eyes were watery, almost open, fixed on the same spot where she had been, but she was no longer there. I moved into this place about a year ago. I was told that a large family used to live here. The last tenant's mail still arrives here. I found a little gold spider toy that belonged to a child. Come to think of it, I actually have it in my room sitting on my bookstand, which is toward the direction the apparition was looking towards in the beginning. Has anyone had similar experiences? or can tell me what just happened. Keep feeling like something is blowing on my hair. This is just a quick post to ask a question to see if anyone else has experienced this sensation. The past three events in a row as I'm laying in bed, I suddenly get the hairs on my neck standing up and my shoulders hunch. Then it feels like something is exhaling on top of my head. It's not sleep paralysis as I'm fully awake when this happens. It literally happens about two minutes after laying down. It usually takes me an hour to get to sleep. It's not like a gentle blow. It's like a short, sharp exhale with a loud whoosh noise. I know this sounds bonkers, but my whole life I've experienced strange connections with the other side. Through physical reactions, or hearing people call my name, or them touching me in some way. I haven't been diagnosed with any form of hallucination disorder, so I'm pretty certain that this is another form of communication with the other side. It also weirds me out because the top of my head is pretty inaccessible due to the layout of my room and bed. My room is in an L-shape, with the bed parallel to the door in the top right corner of the room. I sleep against the wall with my head almost in the corner. So unless something is in the wall, I have no idea why this keeps happening. Unexplainable occurrence in my old home ten years ago. Let me start by saying, I'll remember this until the day I die. Because it's something that marked me and made me change my mind about ghosts as a whole. When I was younger, about ten years ago, me and my mother would watch movies together in her room. I would always pick the film, and this time round, my favorite film at the time, Cool Dog. I can assure you the film is complete dog shit. Halfway through the film, my mom turns on her side because she cannot watch it any longer and just near the end though, the bedroom door handle started shaking violently. When I say violent, I mean the thing was goddamn shaking off its hinges violent. For context, my mom had switched all the door handles in our apartment, so instead of pulling down to open a door, we'd have to pull upwards to open it. Don't ask why. 
I myself don't know why she chose to do that. Anyway, this goes on for about 10 or 15 minutes of constant up and down, but the door stays completely shut throughout, not opening once. The fear I felt at that point, I've never felt anything like it since. I've looked for answers, scientific explanations, and some reason to know how this could have happened, but I haven't found any. No one was home, only us, and no windows were open, so no wind if you could think that the wind was the cause of this anyway. Turns out that the person that lived there before us was an elderly man named George. A week later, my mom asked about him to several neighbors. Turns out that the old chap died in the apartment. You'll never guess where they found the body. In front of my mother's bedroom, died of a heart attack. Make whatever this story, but believe me or not, but I know what I saw, and I know what happened, and it haunts me for life. Why am I always seeing this man? I want to know what I should do. Today I've seen a shadow in my room. I don't know if it was light, because all of my lights were off, and it was dark. But I've been seeing paranormal stuff. For example, not too long ago I've seen this man in a trench coat and a hat, but I couldn't see his face. I went to search up what he was, and they said he was a sleep paralysis entity. But I was fully awake, and he didn't move and continued staring at me. Multiple of my family members have seen him, including my little brother, who I've never spoken to him about the hat man, till I said I saw a man. My brother said that he did too, made a picture with a man in black with a hat on top. I was really freaked out, but I also remember seeing him when I was like four or five years old. I fell down a lot of stairs, but my mom specifically told me when me and my sister were upstairs, we were coming down when I felt a push got knocked down. My sister tried holding me, but she also got pushed, and my mom rolled over and said that she saw a man on top of the stairs. I don't know if he's like following me or my family or if something is up, but it's really bothering me. And not to mention, my dreams have been really weird. For example, in my dream, I was at home when a dark shadow with white eyes started chasing me. And also my grandmother who passed, but was also in my dream, telling me that she was alive. I'm very confused and scared, but I'm thinking about getting baptized. Can anyone have an explanation for what's going on? I'm really scared. I can't sleep. Childhood Memory Glowing pair of blue and red eyes side by side. I vividly remember going up to the third floor in my childhood home one evening, around 6 or 7 p.m. It was fully dark, and when I was young, I can't remember how old I was, maybe around 10. I looked into one of the dark rooms and saw two pairs of glowing eyes, two red eyes and two blue eyes. They were looking back at me from outside the window on the far side of the room. The blue eyes were in the left, and the right eyes were on the right. Red, if I recall correctly. I remember thinking that they looked like cat eyes, but they seemed to be glowing since there didn't seem to be enough light for them to reflect or look the way that they did. Hope that makes sense. They looked almost iridescent, there's no ledge or anything outside that window that would be impossible for anything to stand or sit there. I was really scared of the dark and all things paranormal as a child. So it was surprising that I wasn't absolutely petrified. I just sort of looked at it for a few seconds from the doorway and then ran back downstairs. I mentioned it to an adult who told me it was probably just cats. When I came back upstairs with the adult about an hour later, it was gone. I never saw it again, and I don't know of anyone else in that house who has.
strange of me to go upstairs at night without an adult in the first place, since I get quite scared, as I mentioned. But I thought my mom was upstairs and I was looking for her. Turns out she had gone out. Her room was next door to that one. To this day, I still check to see if a ledge or anything exists when I visit the old house. I've ruled out the possibility of it being lights from the neighbors, or from any electronics in the room. Also, the window was open, so there's no glass to reflect anything, and there was a fly screen on the window which wouldn't have reflected light that way. Presence sitting on bed. In the house we're living in at the moment, that we bought about ten years ago, it's happened on a few occasions. We felt a presence sit down at the end of the bed. At first it happened to me only. After a couple of times of it happening, I told my partner, but he didn't really believe me, thinking I must just be imagining it, until it happened to him. He was having a nap, and then he didn't want to sleep in the room for a while after that. The scariest one was one morning. I was in bed alone. I was on the left side of the bed facing the right side, to which there is a large mirror on the wall. I was half asleep until I felt a presence sit down behind me on the edge of the bed, and it pulled down on the blankets that were covering me with the weight of a presence bearing down on them. I was afraid to open my eyes and looked in the mirror because I would be able to see if something was sitting behind me. After thinking about it for a few seconds, as much as I wanted to dart out of the bedroom, I slowly started to open one eye to see myself in the mirror, then gradually looked upwards in the mirror to reveal absolutely nothing. I was relieved to not see something, but then terrified not knowing who or what was doing this. Now it hasn't done it for a while. Exposing myself to the paranormal. Slight skeptic here, due to never having my own personal experience. I cannot help but be, you know, a see it to believe it kind of person. However, I've had too many reputable people in my life who have, you know, shared stories. I can tell by the way that they talk about them that they truly believe that it happened. My sister is one of them. She is so terrified of it that it's hard for her to share experiences with me. It's not like she can't think of a good story. I can see it in her eyes that she feels true terror. I explained to her my standpoint, and she said that, well... If she didn't have these experiences, she probably wouldn't believe either, since the possibility of ghosts is hard to compute scientifically. It kills me not to know. This is probably completely ignorant of me, but I'd like to put myself in a position where maybe I'll be able to get an experience, whether it be visiting, like a haunted place, a good friend visited a hotel in Mexico where the bathroom faucet kept turning on, drawers kept opening in their own, and the bathroom door would completely close and open on its own. Or maybe I'd use a Ouija board, obviously doing research on how to safely use one, or as safe as possible. Does anybody have any advice about any of this? Do I have a chance of experiencing something? Or because I'm not what I've been told, you know, sensitive to the paranormal, I probably won't have any luck, huh? If I use a Ouija board, will I put myself at risk of being forever haunted? The most research I've done, excuse me, the most research I've done is listen to the Two Girls, One Ghost podcast, which is sure some of it may be fabricated, but for listeners, thrill or whatever, then any advice is welcome. Been seeing the same demon in my dreams for 23 and a half years. It all started when I was six years old. I was asleep in my older brother's room on the floor. I woke up, sat up, rubbed my eyes. Then I saw this thing 
was staring at me, standing directly in the doorway. It had white hair with a bald top and crown on its head. It wore overalls and had deep sunken eyes. It had light gray skin and long black claws as well. Almost as soon as I saw it, it bolted toward me, grabbed my ankles and started dragging me out of the room and into a dark hall. I screamed. Nobody heard me. Then it said something that's also stuck with me since. You'll see me again. Ever since then, at least once a week for 23 years, the exact same thing happens. Same entity, same everything. If this is just some decades-long recurring dream, why does everything seem so real? Why does its grip feel so real? Why does it always say the exact same thing? Why am I able to smell it every time? Why does everything else in the room look like the exact same as if it were really me being awake? Even now, I'm almost afraid to type this because I'm worried that I'm just dreaming again and that it's going to appear in the doorway at any second. Please help me. I don't know what this thing is. I don't know why it won't leave me alone. I don't know how this dream seems so much more vivid than any other dream. I don't even know if it's real or all in my head. How do I put an end to this? What is it? Anything helps. I can't deal with this anymore, and I can't deal with the overwhelming dread and fear. I can't deal with not knowing. I just genuinely can't keep going with this anymore. It makes me afraid to go to sleep. Mediation Miracle The first time that I ever meditated was a few years back now. To preface this, I had been a long-time drug addict, meth and Adderall, as well as an alcoholic. I knew nothing about meditation, or anything metaphysical or paranormal. This was nothing more than a latch-ditch desperate attempt to feel something. Anyway, after taking upwards of 200 milligram of Adderall every single day, among other things, for over seven years, and watching my entire life fall apart, I decided enough was enough. I decided that I was going to lock myself in my apartment until I had kicked my habits enough to function. A couple of months in, in my absolutely trashed apartment, lying on a futon I took from the trash heap outside, at the absolute end of my rope wishing that I could just curl up and die to escape the absolute torment of withdrawal and severe depression, I decided to give meditation a try. If it hadn't worked, I'd just kind of give up entirely. If you know what I mean. I sat there on the floor listening to the hum of the vent fan on the microwave. And I just focused. I focused with every ounce of my being on nothing more than myself. I focused on my breathing, my heartbeat, etc. I let all of my anxiety and worries escape to the furthest reaches of the back of my mind, and I just focused. After a few minutes, each breath I took felt like it was, well, for lack of better phrasing, powering me up. I could feel this intense vibration coming up through my feet, through my legs, into my midsection and chest, and up into my head. Everything, and I mean everything, faded away. And all that was left was me and my breath, and the hum of the vent. Suddenly it felt like this huge burst of energy shot out through the top of my head. Before I knew it, I was floating in the air above my still-sitting body. Everything went black then, and I found myself floating through nothingness for what felt like hours. It almost looked like space. Then suddenly this bright light overtook everything. And I was immediately aware that I was in the presence of something much larger than myself. As soon as I finally saw it, I froze and fear took over. It was enormous. By enormous, I mean it was literally the size of a mountain floating and flying right in front of me in the black abyss. This thing was covered in wings and eyes. It never directly spoke to me. 
but I could hear it in my head, if that makes sense. It told me to not be afraid and that it was only there to help me. It told me to stop worrying about the state of my life and my mistakes and my failures and everything. It told me that life is infinite and every living thing is connected. It showed me the world through the eyes of everyone and everything at once. It told me that I wasn't me, well, but that was something else entirely, and I've been around far longer than the life I was currently living, and would be around for even longer still. I'm paraphrasing here entirely, but again, it never spoke any words. It communicated with me in thoughts, images, and experiences. Suddenly, I was back in my body sitting on the floor of my disgusting, dirty apartment with my arms outstretched toward the ceiling. I don't know what this thing was, but I've never had any experience that felt as real and authentic as this did. Not once in my life. Nothing. I know none of this makes a whole lot of sense, but what it did do for me is completely remove my desire for drugs. I've been sober ever since. My depression is gone now as well. I went from an utter failure at the end of his rope to the district manager for my current company in a span of just a couple of years. I have a fiancé now, a wonderful home, tons of friends, and I'm completely healthy. I have no idea what that entity was or how it did what it did, but I figured I would share this with you all in hopes that maybe, well, someone might know. I've tried to get back to that place through meditation since then many times never worked. The experience itself was incredibly intense and overwhelming and sometimes I'm not even sure that I want it to happen again. Welcome to Paranormal M, where the extraordinary becomes the norm. Subscribe, tap the notification bell, and join us on a quest through our latest thought-provoking tales. We hope you're ready to question everything you thought you knew. My Scariest Paranormal Experience About two years ago, in the dead of winter, my power went out. This was a big problem for me, because I have a pet leopard gecko who requires heating elements to survive started getting very cold in my apartment very quickly. The point I became worried about my pet's safety did the only thing I could think of to do, which was to take my gecko to my car and crank the heater up. Normally we get a few power outages every winter in my area, and they last maybe an hour or two. This time was different, because the power didn't come back on for six hours. After about an hour of sitting in my driveway, I got extremely bored. Started driving around my neighborhood, which had some more rural areas that butted up against a national forest. One of these areas is an absolutely beautiful overlook. This is a place where you can see miles of forest, and also a few street lights, so I'd be able to see if the power came back on. So I drove there and sort of parked to enjoy the view. I'd had the heat running for a while, and the car had gotten a bit hot, so I rolled down the window to let some of the cool air and almost immediately started hearing something kind of far off at first. Kind of a weird, sad-sounding howl mixed with a squawk. I assumed this was an animal, but rolled up the window almost all the way just in case. Over the next 20 minutes, the sound got progressively closer and closer to the car. It almost sounded like it was circling me. I can still hear this sound in my mind, clear as day, even though this happened several years ago. And I know what animals that we had locally, and what they sounded like. This didn't sound like any of them. I got nervous and decided to leave go get some food and gas in a neighboring town, at least a town that still had power. About another hour passes and there's still no power. 
having convinced myself the sound was just an animal and it had probably long since moved, I went back to the overlook to enjoy my meal. About another hour goes by without anything happening. No noise, no nothing, until eventually I see movement among the big rocks in front of me. It's starting to get dark, so I can't really make it out perfectly. But at one point it looked like the head of a disfigured animal peered at me and looked over a rock and then disappeared. I see this several more times, but I stay. Because if this was an animal, there was probably something severely wrong with it. Be it an injury or a birth defect that would probably affect its quality of life. But I wanted to be able to let the animal control know that they could find it and help it or put it out of its misery if necessary especially since it was clearly staying in that exact area. After a while, it starts making noise again. The same one as before, but now it's almost added this horrible gurgling and sounds almost human. At this point, it's gotten completely dark, and I can't see much of anything, but I can still hear it circling the car. Eventually, I hear what sounds like something messing around near the back tire, and I panic. I peel out of the parking spot. I look behind me and see what's now very clearly a person in the taillights. They attempted to chase the car for a few feet, but quickly gave up. Is it possible this was a person under the influence or suffering from mental health issue? Yeah, I guess it definitely is, but... It seems pretty unlikely since it was probably below 30 degrees outside and far enough out of everybody's way that I doubt anybody would be hanging out there, let alone hanging out there for hours and wearing what appeared to be animal skin on their head. If it wasn't a person, based on the location and how the thing looked, probably a skinwalker. This experience still terrifies me to this day. I believe I may have a recording of the sound. I'll try to find it. But if I can't find it, I'll post it. But due to the power outage, I didn't film or record most of the experience to conserve my already dying phone. Was something warning me of flooding in my garage twice? A bit of background. I have a cheap white noise maker from a retail store. I prefer the ocean setting, but if you unplug it and power it back on, it defaults to a water dripping or stream sound. I'm pretty sensitive to a sudden change in white noise, so it usually wakes me up, especially if our house loses power for a second. So there's been a string of cold days lately in the PNW. Multiple days below 30 in a row. Our washer and dryer out in the garage. We've never had a problem before, but this year our washing machine supply lines froze. I unhooked everything, routing the lines to a bucket. So when they thawed, I could catch the water. Onto the taps themselves. The hot water wasn't frozen, so I left it dripping. The cold water was frozen, though. I did what I could with my heat gun before putting it nearly closed. The idea was is that if it thaws, any excessive pressure will be relieved as long as the tap is somewhat open. It was supposed to rise above freezing the following afternoon for the first time in a few days. My cat's auto-feeder goes off at noon, but she likes to wake me up an hour before it goes off. I wanted some sleep, so I got up around 11.40 to press the food button to get some peace and quiet. While I was up, I poked my head into the garage. The hot water tap was still dripping, but the cold water was frozen shut. I headed back to bed. At around 12.20, I'm half awoken by my white noise machine switching to a running stream instead of, well, an ocean setting. I'm still pretty asleep, but I roll out of bed to switch the setting back. 
My cat is really excited to see me out of bed. So I humor her and follow her to the kitchen where I hear water trickling noises. I look into the garage to find the cold water tap as thawed. And I hadn't closed the tap enough as water was spraying everywhere. I managed to get the tap closed to a drip and most of the water and mopped it up. There really wasn't much water, like I had caught it just after it started. I actually really needed some laundry done, so I threw a load in and hooked the thawed supply lines back up. I start the machine and get back into bed. I have a bad habit of scrolling on my phone instead of trying to sleep, especially after being woken up too many times. I'm scrolling on my phone, snuggling with my girlfriend who sleeps in a way later way than I do. She's starting to wake up and chat with me. Then the white noise machine switches to the running stream setting for the second time that morning. I ignored it this time, as it was nice and warm in bed. Five minutes later, my girlfriend wakes up fully and wonders why the white noise is different. I tell her it happened earlier this morning, too, but I'm not sure why. Nothing else loses power. I eventually get out of bed to start breakfast, switched off the white noise altogether. I heard water running in the garage for a second time that morning, threw the garage door open to find water gushing everywhere. This time, the drainage pipe must have been frozen, because the washer was ejecting soapy water everywhere and it was spraying back into the garage. This time it had been going for a lot longer than the first time I caught it. There was a ton of soapy water everywhere. The first time my white noise changed, I checked the garage almost immediately, caught the tap. The second time I ignored it for a few minutes, which lined up with there being significantly more water on the floor before I caught it. Is a friendly house sprite watching over me? Did a ghost mess with the machine to alert me of the potential flooding? I'm not sure what to think. I think I've become a null since the loss of attached entity. About 30 years ago, an event led me to discovering I had an entity attached to me. I called him the Faceless. Everyone else referred to him as my friend. He was always protective of me. Towards others, he was sometimes protective and sometimes antagonistic. But usually, he was just neutral. I could always feel him if I tried to. At one point, he became so antagonistic toward a roommate that I reached out to a local group of paranormal investigators. At the most extreme, he chased her through the house to her room and audibly laughed in my voice on the other side of her door after she slammed it. He shoved another person's shoulder, poked another person's back, and would occasionally cause things in a closed closet to fall off the shelves. I met with a husband and wife, a woman who designed spirit boards, and another woman I can't quite remember. I told them the whole story about the faceless, and how we came into my life and what the current events were. After the meeting, the husband followed me to my bike, shared his personal insight with me, which I really thought was pretty cool of him. They were supposed to meet up with my roommate to get her perspective but I think either she or they never followed through, and I never heard back from them. I can't say for sure exactly when this happened, but I've lost that sense of connection. I can't feel him anymore. I can say that once I noticed the loss of his presence is when the no began. I've never felt like I had any particular personal affinity towards anything spiritual or paranormal. And to be honest, I feel silly even saying that. 
I've always been like a, well, a hopeful skeptic. However, spiritual and paranormal things seemed enhanced, especially whenever I was around a Ouija board or spirit board. They would work better if I was in the room. Tarot cards did things I don't understand. People with the sight saw things more clearly or things they hadn't seen before. Just stuff that seemed weird to me. But I eventually just started sort of taking it for granted. Ever since I stopped feeling the faceless, it's the exact opposite. I think the event that really made it sink in for me was when I went on a popular and successful guided ghost tour. And because of me, I feel like 12 people wasted their money. There was zero activity, for which this tour was extremely unusual. I could tell the guide was completely baffled and even offered everyone on the tour a rain check. He tried one last spot, a location that isn't usually on the tour, but he was obviously pretty desperate. As my own experiment, I hung out at a spot on the road back to the tour's guide's office, and sure enough, they all said that they had various levels of activity and experiences at the spot where I wasn't present. I spoke to the guide afterwards, asked you know, if he had any insight or any thoughts on the conclusion. But he hadn't heard of anything like it before. I've tried a couple of other minor experiments, and they've shown pretty much the same results. One other weird thing I've noticed is I can't go into shops that sell crystals, at least not the ones around the Sedona area. My daughter is pretty witchy, or at least likes to think she is. And so we went to a couple of shops up there, and I almost immediately get dizzy and nauseous. I asked one of the shop owners about it. She suggested I hold something raw and ferrous, like raw iron ore or a similar mineral. I've tried it, and it helps a bit, but I'm still very uncomfortable. Like I can feel the dizziness and nausea just surrounding me without actually touching me. To be honest, I feel kind of dumb even opening up on the topic. But I miss my friend, and I don't know enough about the paranormal or spiritual stuff or whatever to do about it. I guess I'm hoping somebody can help me figure it out if, well, if I'm right. If I'm right in the fact that maybe I create the spiritual void around me. Or maybe it's something else. I'd love it if somebody could tell me how to reconnect with the faceless. But my heart tells me that's not a real option for some reason. I don't know. Maybe that's just my fear. And if I am correct, and I do create this null zone, maybe someone can give me some advice on how to make it useful. If I'm right and the faceless is just gone, maybe I can at least find purpose in what's left after his absence. Three knocks at the door. I feel like I've dealt with spooky stuff all my life, starting from when I was young. My sisters have experienced things, it's not just me. It's almost my entire family. My sister used to cry and talk in her sleep because she said something kept bothering her. She was around three or four years old. It got so bad to the point where my mom, Tias, and grandma had to get the egg out because she was screaming and crying, leave me alone, in her sleep. I remember one time me and my brother were up at around 2 a.m. because my mom and her boyfriend were arguing. It was a toxic household. We were in the kitchen just because we'd be noisy and honestly, you just can't sleep when two people are being that loud. My mom's boyfriend went in the kitchen and he said he was going to go smoke. And while we were in the kitchen, we heard three loud knocks on the back door that led to the back porch. 
Now there's the door that leads to the kitchen, and then the back porch has a door which leads to the stairs in the apartment. And then there's outside. So all doors were locked. Anyway, we heard the knock come from the inside door right outside the kitchen leading to the back porch. I know the knock was from the inside because it was the only door that has a rattling glass panel on it from how old it is. My mom's boyfriend goes, What was that? And we all just kind of looked at each other confused. So I opened the door and it was nothing. Just a dark room with all the stuff we don't use anymore. I turned on the light and all the windows were locked and the door leading to the stairs was locked. Me and my brother just decided to ignore it, go to sleep, and my mom's boyfriend just goes out for a smoke. We didn't talk about it after that. Not clickbait or a fake post. Can you help me relate to being my dad saw in the forest while walking the dog? It wasn't human, nor animal. He describes it as brownish in color like a human silhouette with white flashing blinking light. And he also said it moved extremely fast. Also, apparently, nearby animals could bark at it and feel it. He described he could move at the speed of a motorcycle and that a colt was also nearby. I don't know how true his story is, but I always hear drums when I go into the nearby forest near our house. He says he knows that colt drums some things. My explanation is not that excellent because I don't really know much information. Our dog also tried to go back to the place my dad saw the silhouette, yesterday and today. My dad usually never really believes in these paranormal things. But when he was talking, he seemed pretty scared when he was telling me and my mom. And if it helps for, you know, helping search for the entity... He said the cult was some kind of Asian genre cult. Please don't judge my information as I say again. I haven't seen this entity, and I do not want to. I fear nobody but God. If these kind of entities exist, that is the proof that God exists. Probably related to this, I heard a high-pitched fox-like scream in the backyard. I didn't tell anybody about it until now. I didn't think it would relate to anything. And also, nobody would believe me. And no, this isn't fake. Many of the posts probably are fake on the subreddit. But I can 100% guarantee you this post is true. I myself will try to research it. But it would be helpful. Anybody could help me. Maybe send me some suggestions on what the cult and the entity could be. Now the last sentence I want to write maybe is a bit not safe for work. But he also said that in the cult, a woman once went naked into the city and pissed on the streets. And she was part of the cult too. I tagged this as shadow people because this maybe corresponds to that the best. But again... If this was a human, he probably couldn't have the speed of a motorbike with zero start time. I'll try to maybe scan the EMF in my house and also look out for a ghost or some other shit things. Dreaming my daughter's dreams. Okay, this is weird. My daughter, Eleven, has had nightmares, or at least very intense dreams, for years. I, on the other hand, never remember my dreams. Okay, Gecko, relax. Except on the occasion where she crawls into bed with her mother, and I sleep in her bed. Then I always dream 
very vividly. Last night this happened again, and I had two nightmares with a storyline that's very fitting of what my daughter would have. Well, actually fears that she has. I mentioned this to my wife, and she says this happens to her as well when she sleeps in my daughter's bed. In the years this has happened, she's switched rooms, beds, mattresses, and, well, everything, multiple times. I'm a pretty level-headed guy, but my gut feeling is telling me something is afoot. Any insight from any angle would be welcome. I mean... It's not truly a bad thing, but my spidey sense is tingling. Terrifying Nightmare I usually slept around 2 or 3 a.m. because I'm a senior in college. Yesterday night I came back to my room really tired. I slept around 12.30 a.m. and had the weirdest dream. In the dream, I was traveling in a car with friends and cousins. We went to a large open place with lots of stores and food stalls. I got separated from the group. I was looking for them when a strange man walked toward me. His fist was closed as if he had something in his hand. He walked toward me and sprinkled and threw whatever he had in my face. Felt like liquid. I think it went in my eyes and I could feel some pain, but didn't know why. The group of people I had come with found me. They had seen the strange guy and what he did. They suspected that he had done some black magic. <sighs> we hurried back to the car and go to a priest or someone who could help us. In the car, I could feel a voice inside my head telling me things like, You should die. There's no point in living. I told them that it was a female ghost asking me to take my life. I don't completely, well, I don't completely remember how the ghost tormented me, but after some time, I kept saying that the only way out is for me to kill myself. And as we were on the way, we lost our path and crashed into a tree. I don't completely recall what happened next, but I think the ghost had left my body towards the end of this dream. After that, I woke up. Do such dreams mean anything? It was a very vivid nightmare. Should I be scared? Currently, I'm in my living room watching my baby cousin. She's asleep, so I'm watching TV and just relaxing. The clock hits 1.57 a.m., and my extremely heavy, fully metal-enforced front door opens. I assume it's just a family member coming home late, so I think nothing about it, really. But about 15 minutes later, my sister comes into the living room and says, why the fuck is the front door wide open? I had no idea that it was. I get very confused. My sister continued to say that she had bad gut feeling that she should just come out to check on me and the baby. I check my camera facing the front door. All it says is zero activity recorded. For context, these cameras reset at 12 and show every single pixel change. So every minute or so it has another update that says motion detected, caused by wind or dust. So I'm very confused. I continue to check the camera facing the driveway and there's one human detected notification timed at 1.57. So I click on it assuming that I will see one of my family members that came in. As I watch the video, I wait to see somebody walking up but instead, I see a glowing orb going straight toward the front door. I try to convince myself it's nothing, but I can't help but be scared since none of this seems coincidental. My sister having a bad feeling, the camera facing the door having recorded nothing, the glowing orb also 
I may just be tripping myself out, but all of a sudden it's freezing cold in my house around one hour later. Plus, my dog seems terrified. And on top of all that, the baby I'm watching is very, very much a deep sleeper. Thank God. But she sat up out of nowhere and just looked forward for like 45 seconds until I touched her. And she simply laid back down. Should I be scared? My stepdad is haunted. I, an 18-year-old male, who stayed up at late at night, lives with my parents. Mom, stepdad. I call dad. Well, he'll be referred to as dad from now on. He goes downstairs late at night to eat food. He has problems sleeping and deals with insomnia. So he gets hungry at night. But the thing is, he always goes down at 1.34 a.m. Always on the dot. As soon as it hits 1.34, the door opens and he walks down without fail. He always stays downstairs for, well, what could be hours at a time. The latest he's ever stayed down was for four hours. I was downstairs in the bathroom, and when I walked out, his eyes were shut. It wasn't sleepwalking because you could interact with him, talk to him like normal. But when I walked back into the bathroom and peeped around the corner and saw him, he looked like a robot moving around and doing things so robotically. I walked out and tried saying goodnight by him, but when I received no response, I turned around and he was facing me and just standing there like a board, mouth open, like he was trying to say something. Well, it was wide open, though. I was obviously creeped out and just thought it was a joke he was pulling. I just walked back while still facing him, turned the corner and heard shuffling, like he was rushing something. When I got back to my room and for clearance, I sleep on my bed the opposite way my bed's facing and on my stomach. So I'm laying at the foot of my bed, staring out my doors across the room so I'm facing it. Normally, the lights in the hallway are off, but I heard the light switch turn on. I looked out by my door and saw feet by the bottom of them, the shadow under the door invading my room. It was there for ten minutes. My eyes started watering for how long they were open because I didn't want to close them by all cost. When it leaves, I could not for the life of me fall asleep. Not because I was terrified but I physically couldn't. In the morning when my mom's alarm went off at six, I jumped out of bed as my mom left her room and hugged her. I saw my dad laying on his bed, but he was looking at me with the same face he had when I saw him in the kitchen that night. Every night, it still happens. I never left my room during that period of time, and I'm terrified if someone does. I never have seen anything around the house ghost-related, but my parents and sister have, and they all heavily believe in ghosts. I never talk to them about this because I'm terrified to even think about it. The Porcelain Mask When I was 12 or 13, I lived with my aunt for a few years with my younger cousin. We lived in a little house on a dead-end road in a small town of about 500 people. We're technically considered a village. My aunt was an odd soul. Everyone had their own rhythm, and hers was a different rhythm for sure. She had a fascination with the odd and the strange. From a musical, dancing, miniature, jester figurine to old newspapers from the 20s. Then enter her collection of porcelain masks, of which she had more than 30 of. All different sizes and styles, and she had them all over her bedroom walls. The house we lived in was small but cozy. 
but this house had other paranormal events happen in it before and after the events of this story take place. So it was no big deal when small stuff would happen, because we were odd, so some stuff being harmless by pretty much fine by us, you could say. None of what happened before or after was harmful. This was the only event that I was actually stricken with pure fear. It was my 13th birthday, and for my birthday, I wanted all of us to watch a horror movie together, because those are my favorite kind. Still is to this day. We watched A Haunting in Connecticut. That was my chosen movie. It was my aunt and my uncle, their kids, my two friends, and myself there to watch it. After the movie, we all just kind of crashed. So I went to my aunt's room to sleep, because it was the only room with the TV. One of those old box TVs that would go full static every now and again. I get in there and I put something on quietly and I go to sleep. But I wake up a couple of hours later and the room is pitch black other than the light from the static on the TV. Which, if you know, it's not very much. It's basically a straight low beam. Kind of makes some stuff visible, but anything outside that vicinity gets harder and harder to see. But I can see all our masks clearly. I went to get up to change the channel, and I noticed I couldn't move. It was like some sort of sleep paralysis. My eyes could move, but my body couldn't. So I just laid there, briefly trying to wait for my body to realize when I heard a sound like somebody tapping their nails on the closet door. Just like a little four-tap. I'm sure we all do when we're bored, but it caught my attention and I fixed my eyes on the closet door waiting to hear it again. Within about a minute I had to glance to the wall and then that closet my aunt's masks, that's when I noticed one is missing. And I knew it because it was the one I had gotten her for Mother's Day. I did a double take because I knew where it was always hung and wasn't there. I didn't pay too much mind to it till I had to look back at the TV and I could barely see the missing mask that was missing off the wall now, barely out of light behind the TV. I knew it was the mask by the little pink flower pattern on the left cheek. At first, I thought my aunt had moved it, but no longer than I had that thought, the mask started to raise very, very slowly, raising to the ceiling and slowly making its way to directly over my face in the bed where I stayed for a couple of seconds before slowly descending to what felt like right over my face. I tried to close my eyes. It didn't help. I couldn't scream. It was like the enormous pressure being pushed at me. I could feel it looking at me and I could well, practically see it doing it with my eyes closed. Then out of nowhere, the pressure lifted and I heard the mask break from falling. It fell directly about where it originally hung by the closet. I laid there practically in tears, not able to do anything about it. Then it sounded like someone shaking the bedroom door as hard as possible trying to get in, but it wasn't locked. My aunt and uncle woke up to the sound of the door shaking, came to see what they thought I was doing till they got in front of the door and it swung open on its own. As soon as the door opened, it was like my body woke up and I sat up and screamed as loud as possible and pushed to the corner of the bed crying. That's when I told them what happened. They knew, by the way, and I was acting that I wasn't kidding. And, well, they would have probably doubted it a bit had it not been for the door opening on its own. Preserved in time. I was spending a summer with my dad after I finished kindergarten. This was before starting first grade. 
We lived in a double-wide trailer out in the sticks on a gravel back road. The type of area where you had some woods to play in, or head across the street to a recently harvested cornfield to play kickball or tag or some other childhood game. My dad and I lived with my dad's brother and his wife, as well as their two daughters. My cousin were a little older than me, about four years or so. We decided to play hide-and-seek one evening in the woods behind the trailer. So many spots to hide, laying down behind a fallen tree, ducking in a riverbed. Heck, if you were really crafty, you could pick a tree and climb it till you could see the whole area. We were on, like, round three when my eldest cousin said, Is that an abandoned trailer? When we all regrouped and me and her sister both shot glances in the direction of her stare. And sure enough, there was. But it didn't look that old. Just had the standard moss on the sides and dirt build up as you'd expect a trailer in the woods to have. We sat there and stared at it for a second until my, well, until my eldest just piped up and said, You guys want to check it out? To which me and her sister, both younger and eager to venture, and Rebel quickly said yes. We get up right next to it, and we can see through the kitchen window, and it's definitely abandoned. But it's weird. Everything is so dusty and disorganized, but not trashed or ransacked. Just kind of like an unorganized clutter. We get to the front door, and oddly enough, it was unlocked. So we get inside, and the amount of dust in the air is so thick you can feel it when you breathe. Like trying to breathe through a t-shirt. We get to looking around, and there's so much cool stuff. An antique rotary phone, engraved wooden cooking utensils. Old glass maple syrup decanters. This place was like it was preserved in the 50s or 60s. We made our way back to the master bedroom, and it was so eerie. An old, freshly made bed with a heavy-duty wooden frame. A vanity with various perfumes and makeup items. Even a small jewelry box, one of the ones with a ballerina in it. We start looking in the closet. I see this old wedding dress preserves in a, like a clear plastic wrap. But it was weird, because it looked like it had less dust on it than all the other things. That's when a cold chill ran straight up my back, made every hair stand. I turned to my cousins and I said, I think we should leave now. They agreed, but my oldest cousin grabbed the jewelry box and said, Finders keepers. He took off with it. I wasn't going to fight her about it because I was younger and smaller and really just wanted to get out. As we're walking out, we noticed one of those old candlesticks with a light bulb in it. And that was on the table lit up like somebody had turned a switch on. But there's no way this place has electricity. Immediately, we're all spooked and run out the door. As we're running away, we look back through the kitchen window again and all we see is what looked like a silhouette of a very frail old lady. She had visible frizzy hair, but it was so dark no features could be seen. My cousin still has the jewelry box to this day, and it still freaks me out. House Sitting in a Haunted House Three years ago was one of my friend's birthdays. We started early around 12 and went all out till 3 a.m., one of my friends asked if I could watch their dog when they go to France. I agreed and they showed me around the next day. When it went over, I had a gut feeling something else was there other than a dog. So they showed me around and it was a tiny cute house with a garden. They forgot to give me their house keys and it was like 90 degrees. So I texted them and they said that there was an AC and I could take it out from outside. I took it out and got into the locked house so I could let the dog out. I have a feeling this will be the reason of what happened that night. I worked in a restaurant and I got done at 11 p.m. So we had a group hang out and talked about some scary stuff that happened to each other. 
One of the women told me that there were two different ghosts that lived at the house that I was staying at. One was a sweet old lady, and the other one was not a nice guy. The not-so-nice guy was mostly in the main bedroom, and she said that it's best not to go in there, or it'll make the ghost mad. But I already did, because the couple said that's where the password for the Wi-Fi was. So I went to the house and let the dog out and hung out. Then I went to bed and had my music playing. So the dog came up on the bed to lay next to me and it's about 1am. One minute later the dog jumped off the bed and then I felt the mattress on the left side which I was sleeping on moving up and down aggressively. Note. The dog's medium sized and 8 years old. It lasted for a few seconds but it was something I wouldn't forget. I told a couple of what happened and they said that they never happened to see them all at once but... They have occasionally seen things move. That was the first night I was there, and I had four more nights left of this. But nothing else happened. Guessing it was because I broke into the house to let the dog out. The Hotel Housekeeper of Room 45 A few months ago I went on a trip with two friends. Both of them are very sensitive to the supernatural. One can only sense or perceive it, while the others told me about seeing full apparitions with all their details. We arrived at a hotel in the late afternoon, a hotel that was just over 30 years old, a beautiful hotel with hundreds of guests that day. We took the elevator and realized that our room was quite far away. We had to walk down the hallway and make two left turns. As we began to walk down the hallway, still decorated with a somewhat old carpet, one of my friends said, The good thing is that this hotel isn't haunted. All three of us laughed and continued to our room. The next morning we headed to breakfast. We ran into the housekeeper in the hallway. He greeted her with good morning, and one of my friends asked her, There's no ghosts here, right? The housekeeper just stared at us, and with nervous laughter we insisted, Or are there? She also laughed nervously and quickly told us that there are. She told us that on the upper floor there's the ghost of a night guard who died of a heart attack. Several people have seen him making his rounds on that floor course, only at night. And then she told us about the maid who died in room 45, the one that's practically in front of the two elevators. People say that she frequently knocks on the door of that room at different times, like when they knock to see if the guests want their room cleaned. Well, we said, thank you very much. We hurried off to go have breakfast. We went up to the elevator and one of my friends said, I said there were no ghosts, but it was only to deny that I had felt something. The next evening we returned to our city activities a bit tired, but I still wanted to spend some time in the hotel lobby. We walked down the long hallway to the elevators, and when we arrived, I pressed the down button. Shortly after the bell rang to signal that the elevator had arrived and the left-hand elevator door opened, the elevator was empty and the light was off. I had never felt anything like this and it scared me, so I hesitated to get in. The friend who was with me said, Oh, well, that's really strange. The elevator closed its door and we heard it go up to the floor and then down again. I was waiting for the other elevator to arrive, but it didn't. Instead, the left elevator returned and opened its door again, but this time the light was on. I truly felt goosebumps, something that had never happened to me in such a situation. And more so because I don't even believe in ghosts. I said, how scary. Could it be that the maid from the room in front of room 45 is playing a prank on us? I told my friend. 
We waited for that elevator to leave and for the right hand elevator to arrive so we could go down without fear. I really felt that something strange had happened. How could the light in the elevator go off? There was a small switch located next to the floor buttons, and then, when it went up and down, who turned the light on? If it was empty, the ghost night guard? Well, we returned to our room after spending some time in the lobby and shaking off the scare. We told our other friend, the one who sees ghosts, we told him what had happened to us. And she said, Oh, yes. It was definitely the ghost of the maid. She never used the elevators or went near that area again. And in the last few days we were there, she used the stairs on the side of our room, even though it was several floors up. This city is full of ghosts. It all began when we went to explore the back of a friend's house who owned a restaurant. In the center of the city, all the houses are old, and this house was no exception. My friend, two other friends, and I went there. Suddenly, my friend and one of the friends stayed at the threshold of one of the doors. I asked them what was wrong. They both claimed with a weird look on their face that there were ghosts there. I scoffed at them, telling them that they were crazy, and I continued on. I didn't see or feel anything. They both insisted that they felt something. I guess because they're empathetic to the paranormal, which I recently learned. Every time I wanted to go to that place for dinner, my friend refused. She said there was very negative energy there. I went back many times and nothing happened. The only thing I could witness with my own eyes was doing, well, during a New Year's Eve party that we celebrated there. Three of my friends were surprised by something. I saw how a strand of one of their curly hair inexplicably remained horizontal. I didn't think anything of it, in fact, I found it funny. They just laughed nervously, and maybe I was the only thing that, or maybe that was the only thing that happened that day. Now that I remember, it was surprising, but I remained in denial. Some time later, when I had the chance, I asked the owners of that house if they had also seen or felt anything strange. They replied that they personally hadn't. The only incident was when they were renovating the bottom floor of the house, and they unearthed a tombstone with more than a hundred years of history beneath what they saw was being like a printing press of the convent of La Cruz. They also told me that many customers and employees of the restaurant had made comments about something or someone lurking in that part of the house. The only concrete story came from a kitchen assistant who told me that she had seen a little girl. He was really scared to the point of quitting that job. A few years passed, and I liked to visit a downtown craft beer bar at night. I chatted with the bartender at the bar while talking about craft beer most of the time. One time the topic came up, and he told me that almost when it was closing time, around 2.30 a.m., he saw a man leaning against the wall next to one of the refrigerators at the entrance. There, as if he were drunk... But he wasn't a real person. He said that the apparition didn't speak or do anything. It just appeared there. Obviously, I didn't believe him. Six years after moving to this city, my friend accompanied me to another craft beer place, also located in the downtown area of the city. We had an event, and after it ended, she sat alone at one of the tables while I went to greet and chat with the other attendees and friends. Suddenly, she called me and asked me to please leave. She was very insistent. I asked her why. She replied that she felt a ghost and that it had actually pushed her and moved the bench. I reluctantly agreed, not without telling her she was overreacting. Some time passed, 
I went back to that beer bar. Sometimes I chatted with the owner and sometimes with the waiter. One time I asked the waiter if there was a ghost story or anything like that there. He said yeah. I let him tell me whatever he wanted without specific questioning. He didn't give me many details, but he said that it used to be an old-style tavern, cantina in Spanish. And in the back room where my friend said she was pushed, there was a ghost of a woman, most likely a prostitute. She probably was there because she'd been murdered there. It was that day and that moment when I started to believe people who claimed to see or feel ghosts. Haunted Rifle So my brother used to own this old rifle. It was a Masa Nagant made in 1936. It was used by Russian military in World War II. Now, it didn't take long for odd things to start happening. I mean like day one, night one. Now he gets this rifle home and we're both nerds about history. So we're examining the rifle, looking at markings, etc. Later that night, I was trying to fall asleep. I had my door open to my room when suddenly I watched a black shadow walk past my door. And it appeared to be in wall. Now, I'm a very logical person, even then. So I thought it was my brother going to the bathroom next door. But I never saw the light go on or heard the fan. Because he hits both. So I waited a bit, got up, looked in the bathroom. No one was there and went to my brother's room. And he's gaming away with his headset on. Claims to have never even gotten up. Now this was the start of it. As the summer kicked on and school was out, a whole mess of stuff started happening. And I swear, in the middle of the night, it would sound like somebody in boots was marching in the kitchen. We would find cabinets being left open, even watched as if, well, I swear it was happening, especially on a few occasions, sometimes even hearing them being slammed shut. If you were watching TV late at night, it would feel like someone was right on top of you, like such a heavy presence on you. I even had things thrown off my desk had this one toy tank that sat on my desk and I'd always find it across my room against the wall along my bed being messed up. Now most of this happened at night, or when no one was home. But we all had encounters with the shadow, the marching, the cabinets, but I'm only one with a trashed room per se. Now one last thing is my sister who's 12 seems to be quite aware of spirits being present. Like we'd go somewhere that was haunted first. I could tell you who was there, how they died, type of deal, before the guide would even tell you. She refused to touch the rifle, told us to go and just get rid of it. Day one, there were three attached to it. One was a shadow, which seems so obvious now. One was a female soldier who doesn't know she's dead, and a small kid who's didn't really seem like a kid. Now, some of this part is a blur, but according to her, she would hear the boy in my room running around jumping on my bed. He would apparently do this when I left because he was happy I left the house, I guess. According to her, he talked to her once, said that I reminded him of a soldier in his village, and I was a bad man. Red Eyes When I was about five or six years old, my sisters and I used to share a room. Most nights my older sister and I would see two distinct figures. She would see a lady in white standing in the doorway, directly in front of my bed. I would see a man with red eyes, or at least I thought it was a man. All I could see were these red eyes. Though my sister could see the lady, she said she never really spoke to her. She just stood there getting closer every night. 
while I, on the other hand, would see a pair of bright red eyes staring at me from the closet. A disembodied masculine voice would whisper, JJ, come to the closet and play, over and over. Sometimes my older sister and I would jump in each other's beds and hide under the blankets until morning. This was going on for months until my dad decided to get the house blessed again. We never saw them after that. I'm 24 now. My wife and I recently had a baby. I've been having weird dreams recently. They had always started with me standing in my son's room, staring at the closet, and the familiar set of red eyes would stare back at me. My most recent dream, he actually spoke, his voice a lot deeper and booming than I remember. You didn't come play with me, but your son may be the one to play. He said that before he woke up, called my dad and told him about the whole thing. He told me he remembers, at least he remembers me telling him about that man years before. But then, just then, he went silent for about five minutes. When he spoke again, he recounted seeing the same figure as a child. He also told me he remembered having the same dream after I was born. I've blessed my house twice already, but I can only protect my son so much. I just hope, I really hope, that he doesn't go back to playing in that closet. May never see him again. Jake I wonder what ever happened to my imaginary friend. His name was Jake. Coincidentally, my name's Jacob. Leave me alone, I was a kid. Jake and I used to do a lot of things together. See, I only had sisters growing up. Desperately wanted a brother to play with. In came Jake. We used to play with my toys together. Used to play together before going to sleep. You see, Jake used to keep me calm and protect me from the red-eyed man in the closet. And that went on for at least two or three years, even after the red-eyed man went away. I do remember a few times that he was mad at me. One time being that he was choking me as I was trying to sleep. Another time was whenever I was in the room alone, night or day, I would feel a heavy pressure and this feeling of malice. Well, one day my older sister and I were reading an article. We were at the dentist's office. We were reading something about imaginary friends. The guy's imaginary friend tormented his family so much that they had to move until he finally got rid of it. My sister happened to recall the night I woke up choking or while I was sleeping she could see something standing over me. Needless to say, that absolutely terrified me, and I decided right then and there that Jake was no more. After the checkup, at least. As soon as we got home, I went to the room and I told Jake I didn't want to be friends anymore, and he should go home. Don't remember much after that, honestly, but I do recall after Katrina, the apartment we lived in ended up getting flooded, and during our last visit there, I felt that familiar sense of malice and pure anger coming from what used to be my bedroom. Jake was still there and said, yeah, he was M-A-D, to say the least. Still haven't seen or heard much of him since then, and I'm hoping it stays that way. Fast forward and I have a son, he's two, and sometimes he points in the air and starts talking to whatever's there. I'm not scared, given all of my experiences, but I just hope Jake or the red-eyed man doesn't make another appearance anytime soon, and I pray nothing worse finds its way to him or any of us. I was seven and experienced this nightmare. Several years ago, I had a single chore. It was to walk the dog in the morning and the afternoon. Every day I would do this as normal. 
glancing at the other apartments as I was walking to the giant garbage bins behind the whole entire apartment complex and back. My absolute favorite thing to do as a seven-year-old girl was a profound love for felines to pester the cat that belonged to one of the neighbors on the bottom floor. The cat would sit on the windowsill. You could never really see inside to see what was going on because the blinds on the right were always closed. On the other side of the window was the fluffy cat's paradise. Sometime in, I guess, maybe September, I was walking the dog again. And let me remind you, not a soul dared to put Halloween decorations up. These weren't decorations. I looked at the window to check up on my favorite little furry critter, but instead of seeing her, I saw what looked like a bald, wide-eyed man. His face was smushed up against the glass, and his face was as pale as paper without writing. His mouth wasn't open, and his face looked like something out of one of those circus things with the magic mirrors. It was all twisted and looked desperate. Like the idiot I was, I ran off, not bothering to check it out and see if it would do anything. When I was done, I returned as quickly as I could to find the man was nowhere in sight, and neither was the cat. I could still see the handprints and smudges, but he himself wasn't there. Woman in a Castle When I was in elementary school, our teachers took our class to a castle, Piavera Castle, in the northwest of Italy, if you want to take a look at it. And since we got there, I had this feeling that something was off. Our tour guide sort of walked us through the castle, telling us the story of when it was built, etc. We were going to the second floor, and at some point at the left of the stairs, there was a closed room. Just a rope, you could actually see what was in there. My classmates weren't playing, really paying any attention, just going up the stairs, but for some reason, I looked in that room and I saw this woman dressed in black. She had shining eyes and they were white and silver. She was just standing there with her hands on her belly. I was eight, maybe nine years old, so I was pretty scared. I decided to just turn my head and forget about it. When we had lunch, her tour guide brought us to the castle park. We were on the grass and I was looking around. A bit in the distance, I saw her again, and I asked my friend if she could see her too. She told me that nobody was there, but as she was telling me, I was seeing her, just like I can see my hands right now. During the afternoon, the tour went on a little bit, but I couldn't see her anymore. Before going back on the tour bus, we used the bathrooms. We were pretty tired, so there really wasn't much chit-chat and noise that you'd expect from eight or nine-year-olds. I was waiting for my turn, and all of a sudden I heard this loud scream and a crying sound. No one of us was screaming, and it appeared that I was the only one who heard that. After that experience, I had other experiences with hearing voices, screaming my name with an evil tone, just saying hi to me, hearing footsteps while no one's home. Even seeing someone when no one's home, but I think I said that already. Anyway, I frequently have dreams about something that's about to happen. My Childhood Ghost Encounters I'll also say that I've never had a paranormal encounter or an experience, well, since this. And I'm very thankful for that. The fear and confusion that comes from seeing certain things has a lasting effect on the mind, and it's not something that I've forgotten. I get very emotional speaking about these nights in particular. I'd appreciate any insight that you all may have, and I thank you for taking your time to hear this. My first encounter was when I was very young. I believe I was five or six when it occurred. My household growing up was a very dark environment. My dad was an abusive alcoholic who would do emotional and physical harm to my two siblings, myself and my mom. We 
never really had much, really, but aside from the abuse, we stayed together, and we loved one another. I'm not sure if it was the energy of that place or something that had happened there before that caused what I saw, either. My sister had been kicked out by my dad, and at the time I was sleeping with her regularly. I was young and scared of the dark, and generally just didn't want to sleep alone. One night I woke up suddenly facing the window of my room. It being a small, single-wide trailer, the rooms weren't big at all. My dad being the way he had taken the door off because he didn't trust me for one reason or another. I just remember waking up, rolling over, and seeing this girl in a white dress in my open doorway. Her hair was black and she had no shoes on. Her hair covered her face and I couldn't see of any features. None at all. I felt a foreboding feeling coming from her, and I just knew I shouldn't blink my eyes. I was afraid she would rush up and be in my face when I opened them, so I stared as long as I could, and as I did, I just felt this pulling sensation as if she wanted me to come to her. I knew that wasn't a good idea, and to be honest, I was so scared that I was basically a statue. I stared as long as I could and eventually had to blink, and when I did, she was gone. I'm not sure what would have happened had I, you know, went to her, but I'm glad I didn't. Keep in mind that during this time I was too scared to watch horror movies or anything like that, so images like this were not normal to me. I've never seen her before and definitely not after. My second and last encounter came about one to two years after that. I'd just come home from a Valentine's dance and was getting ready for bed. I tended to sleep near my parents' room. If I could get on the couch, I'd do it, because, well, I felt safer. I'd had a great night with no neg well, no negativity at all, which is what I can't explain about the situation even more. While trying to sleep, I started to hear a smacking noise, kind of like what people who eat with their mouth open sound like. I was very confused, so I looked down the side of the couch at the floor and I saw what looked like a head. I stared at it for a bit because it was making noise. Eventually, it slowly started looking up at me, and I could see that it had the features of an old man. It was smacking its mouth and it looked like a lot of blood was coming out. I got so scared that I jumped up, stamped on the head. I don't remember feeling anything solid other than the floor and I did so. Ran into my parents' room, crawled in the bed beside my mom and I tried to sleep. Wanted to check my surroundings because I was still feeling unsafe. I saw the head everywhere now, like it had duplicated itself. It was all over the sheets and on the floor beside the bed. All of them were staring at me and smacking their lips. All I could do was put my head under the covers and pray. I eventually fell asleep. I'm not sure if it was the toxic environment I grew up in or what that caused this to happen. I've never forgotten these experiences. I've never even wrote this long of a post on Reddit, period. I just felt like I needed to get it off my chest and see what some others believe, might think. That's the end of tonight's stories. I'm going to record my own stories for you guys. Probably put it up on the first next month. Or maybe the 13th. Yeah, let's make it the 13th. Look forward to that. See ya. Greetings, fellow truth seekers of the unexplained. Welcome to Paranormal M, your portal to the mysterious and the inexplicable. Subscribe and turn on notifications to embark on a journey into the realms beyond comprehension. We hope you're ready for a mind-bending experience. The Disappearance of a Marine Sergeant on Marambaya Island I'm a former Brazilian Marine, eight years of active duty, 
and I'd like to report a well-known story among the Marines about the disappearance of a sergeant on an island where we usually conduct military training. This island is known as Ilha da Marambaia. This island that during the time when Brazil was still an empire was a refuge of slaves who fled the farms, and they would gather in communities in the most isolated parts of the island. These people are known as Quilombolas, and to this day they still survive on the island through hunting and fishing. At one of these military trainings that takes place every year, a newly graduated sergeant, I don't know his name, but let's call him Ricardo to make it easier to tell the story. Thanks. They made friends with one of the Quilombolas who lived there in the region, which is very rare to happen as were advised to avoid any contact with them, as they are known to be hostile to military men. During some conversations with the Quilombola, he told Sergeant Ricardo about an ancient story of an old treasure hidden inside a cave in one of the isolated areas of the island. This old treasure that was hidden there by a group of thieves who was shipwrecked on the island many years ago during the time when Brazil was still an empire. However, he told Sergeant Ricardo that he should not enter the cave because any Quilombola that had already entered into it never returned again. So it was known to be inhabited by a spirit who protected the treasure from outsiders. Ricardo was skeptical, didn't believe much in spirits, so he asked for the Quilombola to show him where the cave was. The same refused to show the cave entrance because he said that it was very dangerous. Ricardo then did not insist and decided to forget that story and just focus on the military training. Years passed and Ricardo didn't forget the story of the treasure on the island. He was thinking about how his life would change if he managed to find that treasure. The life of a marine in Brazil was very rough and the salary was very low, so he dreamed of getting out of the Marine Corps one day and starting his own business, and that treasure could help him with that. Knowing this, he decided that the next time he went to attend a military training on the Murambaya Island, he would insist that the Quilombola show him where the cave entrance is, even if for that he had to offer money to show him the way. So after a few months, Sergeant Ricardo became aware that he would be chosen to be part of the next training on the island. So that would be his chance to change his life, and he would not let that escape. Arriving on the island, he attended the usual training drills and waited until the day off, which was one of the days when there would be no training, and he would have more time to explore the cave. He waited for dawn to go to the Quilombola's place without anyone from his squad seeing him, since the exploration of the island by military was prohibited by the officers. As there have been cases of military disappearing in previous training, and then he asked one of the Quilombolas to show him the way to the cave. Before he went to the Quilombola, Ricardo invited a close friend to go with him to help him find the treasure. This close friend is the person who spread the story that you're reading now, and said that if they found the treasure, he would share the treasure with him. The sergeant's friend refused to go because he said it was very dangerous and advised him not to go there either. He ignored his friend's advice and decided to go, well, just go like there's no other way but there. After finding one of the Quilombolas and insisting that it showed him the way, he agreed, took Ricardo to the entrance of the cave. This is where the sergeant entered in search of the treasure that could change his life. The next day, the sergeant's friend noticed that he had not returned from his search in the cave, told the officers what had happened. Search teams were requested, and it took about a week to find the entrance to the cave where the sergeant entered. After conducting searches inside the cave, they found the sergeant dead. 
just his body. Probably he was lost inside and couldn't find the exit, or perhaps was even bitten by a snake. Heavy rain on that island is very common, and normally snakes take refuge inside the caves. It is said that the Marine Corps just compensated the sergeant's family and hid the case from the public so that it didn't appear in the newspapers. I don't know if that really happened or not, but it's a very common story in the Marine Corps that's often told by older Marines. It's said that this story happened in the early 1990s, so I think at the time it wasn't very difficult to hide this kind of story from the media. I think I date a girl who was possessed by a spirit. A few years ago, I got home from work. I decided to look for some girl on Tinder to go out in the night with. It was 7 p.m. on Friday. So I matched with the girl who was mentioning things related to smoking weed in the profile description. So I decided to start a conversation with her about that. After a few minutes talking, she told me that she really liked to smoke weed that day, and that she was pretty much without any of it. As she lived near to my neighborhood, I decided to call her out that night to eat something, drink some beers, and later smoke some weed in my car. She accepted, and sent me her WhatsApp number and the location where she was. It was like three kilometers away from my home. So I took a shower, changed my clothes, got in the car put her location on the GPS and went toward her. I took a while to find her on the streets, but after a few attempts, I found her talking to a friend on the sidewalk. I honked. She recognized me and then entered the car. After she got in the car, I tried to start a conversation with her. Strangely, she didn't say anything at all. I was basically talking alone all the time. She rarely said, okay, and sometimes agreed, shaking her head, and that was it. At the moment, I thought, well, she must be shy, no problem. I took her to a snack bar. I tried to talk with her and while we were eating, and she didn't say anything. She just ate and nothing more. Then I finally gave up and stopped talking also. So after eating some snacks and drinking some beers, in absolute silence, mind you, I invited her to smoke a joint in my car. She said, okay, and went to a deserted street where I parked my car. After that, I sat with her in the back seat and we smoked together, and I thought, I hope this will make her get more relaxed and maybe she'll start talking a bit. After some puff, she looked more relaxed but still quiet. We eventually kissed each other and we had sex in the car. The weird part is, while we were having sex, she started behaving really weird and started scaring me a bit. Like looking me directly in the eyes with a weird, angry expression, as if she was not the same person anymore. When that happened, I just thought she was high or something and didn't care much, because I guess I was also high. Then after that, I just left her at the same point where I found her. I think her house was on that street, and after that, I'd gone home to my house. The next day when I was sober, I was thinking about her facial expression while we were in the car and found it all that very strange. She grabbed my head with both hands and was staring me in the eyes with a bizarre expression of anger. Her eyes were really wide open and her mouth was like she was kind of smiling. Anyway. I decided to follow her on social media, Instagram and Facebook, to know more about her. And most of her posts were really random and weird stuff. Like, for example, a lot of pictures of cardboard sheets with random phrases written in really bad English. Or from Brazil, and here we only speak Portuguese. Like, for example, I love, where are you? Heart our God, us kill him. Where will us? We continue. Each sheet full of random stuff like that. Then one day she started talking a lot about stuff in her personal life on Instagram stories. 
that she had a baby that she loved, that she was enjoying to again be an Umbanda. This is an African religion that is quite common here in Brazil. She was happy to be talking again with her grandmother who was already dead. And then she talked something that made me understand everything that happened that night in my car. She said that whatever she, or whenever, I think they mean, whenever she was high, she got possessed by a spirit of her grandma. And that she really enjoys that. So I connected the dots and I realized that she probably was under the influence of her grandma that night when I met her. After that, she started posting pictures of her face on Instagram that looked really scary. Like if she was possessed by a spirit or something. In one of the pictures, her jaw was really wide opened as if it was broken and her eyes were all white. It sent chills down my spine when I saw that. Well, after seeing all that stuff, I just decided to unfollow her on all social media and blocked her number so she can't contact me anymore. I'm not sure if she's just inventing all that stuff, but to be honest, I'm not really interested to contact her again and find out the truth. Well, that story was bizarre, and, well, it was bizarre on too many levels for me. On to the next one. Country Club When I Was Young I was maybe 10 or 11. My dad ran a bar in a country club. And from day one, I never liked being there. Especially at night. I would always bring my Xbox to keep myself occupied. And the way the bar worked was you had the main area where the bar was. And through a little hallway was the bathrooms. And those led to another room that my dad put arcade games in. It wasn't used very often, but I think it's because nobody really knew about it. Through another door was a little room where I would play my Xbox, and then behind that room was my dad's office. Outside, where the employees usually parked, there was a small loading dock and a gate that led to a bunch of old pools that were shut down a long time ago, even then. And one day I saw what I thought was a person. When I first saw it, it was wearing a black hood and moved very quickly away from me inside the defunct pool area. But when I really looked at it, I saw that it didn't have legs. Or what legs are supposed to look like. They looked like a blur of legs and I saw it dip around a corner. So being the curious kid that I was, I went looking around to see if I could see who or what it was and never saw it again. Another time I was just wandering around after getting bored playing games and I heard a piano playing in the ballroom. That was just outside the bar in the pro shop. So I went to look and no one was there. But there were imprints in the stool like someone was sitting there. And I've had multiple dreams even spanning into my adult life about being in there while the piano's playing. Nobody's there but the piano is still playing. One night when I had the dream again, I was grown and walked into the ballroom and I heard the piano yet again but I saw a small kid standing with his back turned on the stage. Then everything went black. I've also had multiple times where in the back rooms I would hear voices and doors opening, but no one would be there. There were a couple of rooms that were just off the kitchen, and I had only been in them once, but the power was shut off in those rooms. I guess because they weren't used as they were like locker rooms for the pools. I walked in one night because I thought I heard someone in there. I get in maybe three steps, and I hear a very loud crash. I turned and ran the other way. The last thing I'll tell you about is one night when my dad had to close up. I was sitting in the lobby, just off the ballroom, and I saw someone just outside the door pacing around. It looked like a full person. Legs, arms, eyes, mouth, expressions on his face. So thinking it was a patron of the bar, I brushed it off and looked away. When I looked back up, the guy's literally disappearing in front of me. 
I saw his upper half just fading away like Marty McFly in Back to the Future. I was so scared by it, I ran to my dad crying for the life of me, and I couldn't tell him what was wrong. I was pretty much just that level of inconsolable. The place never sat right with me, and I learned later that one of my friends snuck in there while it was closed years later. They saw the exact same apparition I saw the first time that was running. She also heard the piano playing in the ballroom and saw what looked like bloodstains in one of the rooms just off the kitchen. From what I was told, there was a guy that took his daughter hostage because his wife was filing for divorce, and he killed her. But then himself, and apparently, there were other deaths, but I don't know anything about them. I think I saw my deceased son, and it makes me emotional. Months ago before moving to a new home, I began to wake up during the night and feel as if I was being watched. My wife miscarried our first kid. He was my first son, and I was shattered when it happened. Well, one night I woke up, not really sure what time it was. My wife was asleep and all the kids were sleeping. I check on them periodically. But being a father, I like to know my kids are safe and sleeping peacefully. I know my son was in the living room, he gets nightmares, and I'll run in there and assure him that I'm there. However, the night I woke up, I faced the wall but felt this presence. It felt like I was being watched. I sit up instinctively and see the silhouette of what I thought was my son standing in the doorway. Hey buddy, you okay? Have a nightmare? No answer, but I saw the blonde hair and a smile and what dim lights came from the television that was in the living room. I began to get out of bed, and what I thought was my son dove around the door frame. I walk out of my room and see my son sound asleep. Buddy? My heart starts racing now as I approached my son, check to make sure he sound asleep and not trying to fool me undoubtedly asleep, and I had no other sons then. I began to look around the house, but the image of my son in the doorway kept replaying in my head. What if it was my deceased son? Was he always watching? Nothing like this has happened since, but I can't shake the possibility that if it was him, it felt so broken. Connection. But when I told my mom about when I saw the little boy walk out of my sister's bedroom into my parents' room, she told me a story about a neighbor that lives a house down from us. She had told me that the lady's son had killed himself. I'm not sure why, but many people have said that he walks around in the streets and just stands in a spot. I haven't seen him, nor do I want to. Not only has my mom told that story, but my friend's mom has also seen that man in the streets. She told me that when her son was younger, my friend's little brother, they were outside talking to a family member and it was 7 or 8 p.m. Not sure the son was playing, really, but while the mom was talking, but all of a sudden the son kept nagging his mom about a guy. The mom ignored the son, thinking he was just seeing a guy walking. It's normal in our neighborhood, but the little boy kept nagging and he kept saying, Look at the guy standing. So she finally took a look and a guy in the distance is just standing there. See, look, I'm not sure if she saw his face or anything. She didn't really specify, but she went back to talking to the family member and when she looked back up, the guy was gone. By the way, I'm not sure if I'm missing some stuff. She told this story a long time ago. I just, this is what I remember about this story. And when I said that, it probably connects to the story I posted before, because it might be the guy as a little boy just looking around, because I haven't seen the little boy since. I 
think my house is haunted. So a few years back I was doing online school, so I was home alone for most of the day. And this day I was finished with my schoolwork, so I was just laying on my bed on my phone. And keep in mind I was home alone. My dad and stepmom were at work and my stepbrother was at school. And suddenly I started hearing these loud, heavy footsteps coming from the hallway. Also, my room's on the second floor, and it sounded like someone with heavy snow boots was slowly walking back and forth from my room to my dad's room, which was left from mine on the same side. I just completely froze and paused the video. And I just kept walking back and forth and back and forth for guess two minutes, but at the time it felt like forever. Eventually it stopped, but I didn't move as I was in shock at what I just heard. My initial thought was someone was in the house, but I never heard anybody walking up the stairs. And by the way, the stairs and the upstairs is covered in wood. But after a minute of me listening to see if I could hear anything, I got up to see what it was. So I opened my door, checked around the corner, no one was there. I went to the bathroom window, which looks out over the front yard and driveway, to see if I could see any cars, but there were none. So I just went back to my room and locked the door. Around the same time that happened, I don't remember if it was before or after that incident happened, but one time, also home alone, I was laying on my bed on the side, and I heard a voice in my right ear. Now you could say that it was my brain just being loud and I would agree with you, but I can't explain the hot breath I felt on my ear when it talked. And it was so close to my ear it sounded like it was yelling, but I know it was whispering. I can't remember what it said, but I know it was just one word. And that was the only time that ever happened. Fast forward a few months, nothing strange like that happened for a while. So I mainly forgot about it. And one night I was going to go downstairs to get some water and for some reason I always peek around the corner to see in the living room just to see if anyone is there. I get quite paranoid at night. So I walked down the stairs and started to peek into the dark living room expecting nothing when I saw this shadow figure sitting on the couch. The only thing I could make out was the head shape and its shoulders. But past that, it was just a dark mass. I froze and just stared at it. It didn't even move, just sat there in the dark. After a minute of staring at it, I audibly said, Nope. And went back upstairs and locked my door. I still peek around the corner at night waiting for it to be back, but it never is. My Ghost Story When I was five, my family moved houses. It was a big deal for us to move from the old cramped house to one that could fit our growing family. The farm near our development had been abandoned for nearly a decade at the time, and most every building had collapsed, save for two, the old farmhouse and the barn. For sake of privacy, I'm going to refer to the farm as the WB Farm. As I grew older, the farmhouse had become dilapidated, yet the barn still stood strong. The neighborhood kids always thought the place was haunted, and the older kids told stories of a woman looking through the second-story window of that house. There was no flooring in the house, as they discovered. My parents never wanted me near that place since I was dangerous, but I finally got my break when my friend's dog got loose. We searched and searched, and eventually got to the barn, which was the only structure left. The barn was massive, so the door didn't let much light spill in. We searched and searched, but we didn't find the dog. However, we did find something else much more disturbing. Animal bones had been left behind in a pile. Disturbed, we started to go when we heard a loud, disembodied voice telling us not to go. 
I don't think we had ran any faster in our lives before, never to return. And this year, everything left of the WB farm was raised, and I can't say I could have been happier to see it go. A Ghostly Message at the Movies This encounter happened to me in 2010 when I lived in Chicago. I went with my best bud to catch a science fiction movie at AMC River East, my favorite theater in town. It was a matinee. We sat in the balcony in the cavernous theater number two. No one was in the balcony with us. He gave my bud some money to get some popcorn and soda. As I sat there watching those annoying pre-movie commercials, I heard the chair behind me squeak. It sounded like somebody sat down right behind me, but you'd have to enter from the side of me to be able to see you walk in. I didn't think about it too much until I felt a hand on my shoulder. When I looked at it, like, why is this person touching me? I saw red nails, a big old wedding ring, and a pearl bracelet. I heard a woman's voice say, Pick up your phone. It's your mother. Do as she asks. I didn't really recognize the voice because it was more of a whisper, but then I felt a gentle stroking of my hair. I could smell a floral perfume. At that point, my buddy had returned. He looked at me and asked who that lady behind me was, but he couldn't describe her well because of the shadows. The theater light started to dim and the trailer started. A few minutes later, my phone vibrated. It was my mother. My grandmother had just died unexpectedly and I needed to go home to help with funeral arrangements. She thought I'd be the only one who could keep it together to organize it. At the funeral, my grandmother's hands were crossed, like you'd expect. She had shiny red nails, her wedding ring, a pearl bracelet, and I could smell her rose perfume. It was the last thing my grandfather bought her before he passed, too. Appalachian Horror I figure the best way to start this is by stating that this is a series of events that I've experienced throughout my 27 years of living in the Appalachian region of rural southwest Virginia. Some have just been feelings, while others have left me unable to be outside after dark. Which, as many of you may know, is something that you never do when you live as deep in the mountains as I do. Firstly, I will go back as far as I can remember to when we had just started living in the house that we still currently live in. In the grand scheme of things, our house really isn't all that old. If I remember, it was built somewhere around the 60s or 70s. So really not that old. When my grandparents bought the house and we moved in, that was when experiences were starting to happen. They weren't bad experiences, don't get me wrong. Mainly, things are being moved, shadows out of the corner of my eye, strange smells and sounds, but nothing I would call bad, just strange. My mother and father had moved a trailer onto my grandparents' property at that time as well, and my mother, unlike my granny and myself, is very much a skeptic. I vaguely remember her always brushing off Granny telling me about strange smells and other things happening around the house. Until one day she was by herself at the trailer. My brother and I were at school, Granny was at work, and my pawpaw was most likely in his recliner at the house. Something to know about where the trailer sat at the time and the land that we own. We own a small few acres of land with a creek running about halfway through it splitting the land that we lived and worked on from the land that was almost entirely mountainside. The trailer was sat at the very edge of the property, by the creek. There was about half an acre of land between the house and the trailer, and my mother, who was home alone, started smelling a man's aftershave. Could potentially mark that up to my father, 
Except my father didn't wear anything like that when he was alive. Not that he didn't like it, that stuff just never smelled good on him. Granny always said that smell good always rotted on your daddy, even as a baby. So it wasn't my father, my papa was in the house at the end, and that was at the end of the property. She couldn't figure out where this clove-like smell was coming from. Things went on like that for a long time. Objects being moved, the smell of a man's aftershave, all of it. Finally, I don't know what prompted it, my grandparents decided to get the house wiring checked out. Turns out that house had been wired with the same kind of wires that were used in coal mines and the lot, if not most of the wires were bad. Strangely, once the wiring was fixed, all the strange happenings in the house and property stopped. Granny still says to this day that the previous owner was looking out for us. Now we're going to skip forward a few years now. By this time, my mother's divorced my father, given up custody of me and my brother to her grandparents. I'm still at the age where playing outside in the dirt and creek is the most fun a southern child can have. And I've made myself a little place across the creek and a little thicket to play in. It was a good, quiet place for a child to play. And it was good for a while. There's always a feeling that comes with being watched. Different feelings to being watched, and this feeling I got, even as a child, was not a welcoming nor friendly sort of watching. I never found out what it was, nor have I gotten back to that little spot I used to play in. Even approaching the area I used to play in gives me such a sense of dread and apprehension that I've never been able to shake it. A few years later, and my younger brother and I are living with my mother. We lived there with her new husband. A mistake, now that I look back on it, but that's not a post for here. I wanted to decorate my new room, so we went to the local flea market where I bought a clock and a painting to hang up in my room. Now, before these items entered the house, it was just a normal house. Afterwards... Doors opening on their own, items being moved, my cat refusing to leave my side, my things gone missing only to show up in other rooms, sleep paralysis, a tall, dark shadow moving in the corner of my eye, and voices. It was awful, and a time in my life I never want to revisit. I distinctly remember laying in my bed with my cat, my light was on and I had my CD player blaring music. The usual teen things. When out of nowhere, it felt like something kicked the edge of my bed. And I'm not talking a light kick like somebody trying to get my attention. I'm talking hard enough to scoot my bed several inches to the side. There were nights where I'd be laying in bed and my door cracked because of course I had the room with no windows and I've always had a slight fear of pitch black. I'd be laying there on my side, so my face was facing the door. Now, something to know about me is that I have awful vision. Without my glasses, I can only see clearly a few inches in front of my own face. This doesn't mean, however, that I can't see movement. I believe that it's far more terrifying to only be able to see a dark blur moving towards you than to clearly see what that blur is. We didn't stay long in that house, was forced to move not long after, and during the move I was forced to leave the clock behind, and oddly enough the strange happening stopped. Now we skip a bit forward in time. I'm an adult now and have had more experiences now that I'm back in my hometown in the heart of the Appalachian Mountains. Everything from hearing a woman outside in the middle of the night in January saying, Hello! Over and over being outside at night smoking and getting the overwhelming feeling that if I didn't get inside immediately that something would attack me. All the way to the crickets outside going quiet and the fear of turning around to look out the window for fear of what may be looking in. Oh. 
hotel ghost experience turned skeptic to believer. So this is an experience I had in 2018 when I was management trainee with an organization, and it entailed a short one or two week stint across their major offices in different cities. Our office organized for accommodation for us too. For my second stint, I was put in a city where I had never been before and had no friends or acquaintances. So the company booked a hotel close to the office premises. The room was rather big and seemed very luxurious, albeit a bit old and shabby. What stumped me the most was how economical it was. The first night was uneventful and for a woman traveling alone for the first time, it felt secure and comfortable. The second night, at about 9.30 p.m., I ordered in, and after finishing my dinner, I went out to my door to place the food trolley for collection by the staff. Just when I turned around to close my door, I saw someone staring at me from the corner of my eye. The person was at the end of the corridor, and it was very dimly lit. And let me add here that only two out of the twenty rooms on the floor were occupied, and ten were being renovated. Hence the dim lighting at night. When I turned to look, the person ran out of view toward the elevator. I was creeped out and, well, just locked the room and reported this to the reception. Third night. I was talking to my mom on a video call. I heard heavy pacing and running at about 10 or 10.30 p.m. My mom heard it too. I sneaked to the peephole and I saw no one but I heard the footsteps right outside my door. I called the reception and they sent someone to check, who reported that there was no one and I checked their CCTV footage. No one was there. Fourth night. I got a call on the hotel intercom, and when I answered, I heard only heavy breathing and low growling noises. This continued another two times before I called the reception again to raise a complaint. They checked their call panel records and said I had not received any from any current hotel guests or staff lines. I checked again next morning just to be sure and they showed me how the system is automated and no one can tamper with it. It showed no incoming or outgoing calls from my room. Fifth night. Heard a constant knocking on the wall behind the bed. Moved across the room. Basis where I was standing and... This creeped me out much more, and as someone diagnosed with hyper-anxiety and depression, it felt like I was losing my mind, and I got an anxiety attack. I ran out of my room to the reception two floors below, and the manager on duty just calmed me down, and I was extremely upset. I questioned everyone around, and none of the staff said anything, and said it was strange as such things were happening. Later... A woman from my hometown, who was currently employed there, accompanied me to a new room that they assigned me to. She told me in private that the floor I was on was sealed for five years and had recently been opened. Rumor has it that some old hotel staff had molested a woman and she was killed in the struggle. The administration covered it up and paid off the perpetrator and the family of the victim and sold the property to the current owners. Since then, people have reported multiple occurrences on that floor. Also, these were major events. Some other small things happened, like the feeling of being watched constantly, cold spots and feelings of nausea and panic. I checked out promptly the next morning, got another hotel, paid for my pocket, and have since then been extremely scared and anxious to be alone in any hotel room. Strawberry Moons On a warm day in early of June of 2017, it was just a normal day. My fiancé at the time was away on military orders, so I was staying with my mom. She lived in an older farmhouse half a mile from town. I spent at middle school and high school, growing up there with my three stepsisters, half-brother, and blood-sister. 
My two stepsisters were staying at the time, being the youngest was still in school, therefore visiting her dad. I started working out during the day, sometimes at night. During the day I would go for runs behind the house there, there was a farm road between fields of corn, perfect for running and beautiful. I was looking on Facebook and read there was supposed to be a quote-unquote strawberry moon. So I snuck out into the porch where it was filled with darkness and took a picture. It was breezy but warm out that night. I decided to work out after going inside. My daughter, nine months, was asleep on the couch in the next room. Walking into the house, there's a foyer. Straight away is the bathroom and to the right is the kitchen. I went to the bathroom and looked in the medicine cabinet for Tylenol. Went back through the kitchen and stopped to get my phone. I looked straight ahead out of the kitchen and door and window just to see a lit up face staring at me looking wrinkled or burnt. It was creepily smiling. It had frizzy hair, a pale face, but rosy cheeks almost. The rest of its body I couldn't see. My mouth dropped and its smile only widened. I ran across to the other side of the table and went to peek again to see if I was just imagining shit or if it was just a reflection but it didn't move an inch, still smiling at me. I ran upstairs frightened and told my stepsisters I just saw a clown outside. I don't know why I said clown, it was just the first thing to come to mind. I do believe it was paranormal. Anyway, we ended up calling the cops, just in case it was actually a person standing out there trying to scare us. My dad's experiences with skinwalkers. I have hundreds of stories from my father about paranormal encounters that he's had. He has two of them concerning what I believe to be skinwalkers. Both of these take place in the southeast during the late 80s or 90s. Excuse my writing, because I'm not a writer. To begin with, my dad is a Native American and spent a lot of his childhood and early childhood. The first one, my dad was walking around in the woods of a reservation with his friends. His friends were back at the car. He was walking about 50 feet away from them. He saw another Native man behind a bush, but he could immediately feel something was wrong with him. The guy had on no clothing as far as he could see. No jewelry, no makeup, or anything distinguishing. His hair was pulled back into a ponytail. They held eye contact for a long time, what felt like hours. In reality, probably it was less than a minute and a half. He was temporarily frozen with fear. He called for his friends, but none came. He turned to face them. Then he looked back and the man was gone. Within seconds, noiselessly, no sign there that anyone was there at all. The second was definitely a lot closer to what most people think of when they hear about skinwalkers. My dad was out in a secluded forest when he heard a piercing scream come very close by. He described it as a mixture of a native throat cry, the ay 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 sort of sound, Mixed with that of a feral cat or a hurt bird, they brushed it off first this time. Then they heard it a second time, and it was just as close as it had been, despite them moving. They decided to get out of there. It was deafening and about ten seconds long. It happened about three times as they were leaving, and never once sounding any farther or closer away. Pre-birth memory slash pre-birth existence near birth experience. All right, I've been having this memory for a long time now. Since I started remembering only small parts since seven and kept remembering bits and pieces throughout my life, I'm going to go out and say that it's a memory that I have and it's from the other side. There I was in a void couldn't see anything. 
and I didn't have a sense of cold or heat, or even emotions like anger because I didn't have a body. I was there, floating at great speed, toying and playing around since I realized that I was an orb of light. So I was floating there happy, which is an emotion, I guess, in every direction, just messing around like a child. The other glimpse of my memory is that of me waiting in line like in a queue, like at an airport waiting for check-in type queue. And it was a, it was a while, I guess. Everything was white, and there were other orbs like me. The other memory I have is choosing my life. I don't know, it led me to want to experience life, but I really did not want to miss out since everybody else was doing it. It was kind of like FOMO. Fear of missing out. So anyway, choosing phase there begins with my male energy and female energy. Male to my right, female to my left. I was presented with thousands of different planets and worlds to live in, like literally there are so many to choose from. It was like I was presented, like on a screen. In those, I saw futuristic cities like Metropolis type and feeling I was getting that world was that it was very advanced. In the other screen, I saw a reptilian humanoid being in a cave, or rather he just got out of the cave to view the landscape, I guess. It was night and dark blue and rocky. It was overwhelming to choose just one life, and I did sense that there was a presence to hurry up. So I was kind of recommended by beings and guides or entities to go to planet Earth. So then I was to decide which of the family and the year I wanted to incarnate to and what life I was going to have. There were maybe three or four options to choose from, so anyway, I was kind of interested, or rather considering to choose options, but I was again recommended to choose one family over the other. Or rather, I guess, I wanted to at least incarnate into a country or city that was the most advanced. I saw glimpses of what that life would be like, and I saw that I would get to experience life in other countries. I saw what my body would look like. So anyway, the advantages of this life would be to get to experience life in other countries, and this life would be much more relaxed in comparison to other options I was considering. But there was going to be a suffering internally. Life after 20s, I guess, was going to be a struggle, and I saw that I'd get to live to my 80s or 90s. I only saw like moments or glimpses of the life that I'm living now. From the point of my orb self, I was excited for this life, I would s sort of say naive. And I knew that this was not going to be easy, but it was the easiest from the other options. I also remember telling them that I want to remember, and that there were now three beings discussing this, and I couldn't perceive them or didn't know what they were saying. Were there always three, or is it because I didn't notice the third one? I don't know. The male one to my right didn't communicate much. It was like professional, like he was doing his job. But female one to my left was loving or caring. I also sensed other orbs, too. They were like me choosing, I guess. I should also mention that the choosing part was happening in a darkness and void area. The next memory after that is of me floating over planet Earth, and I felt like there was a pressure behind me to hurry up and, through some device or pool or tube thing, I entered or rather was sucked magnetically like sucked and instantly. The first feeling I got was fear. I was shot like a bullet to Earth at great speed. I said to myself to remember this memory. I willed it that I want to remember. And there was I was being bulleted to earth like zooming at the speed of light. From my perspective, I wanted to stop and explore the earth as a floating orb. But I couldn't control the force. As I was approaching to the destination, I decided I was going to research everything about the planet and feel this freedom again. Then there was white light, or rather a flash, signifying that I already entered the womb and boom, darkness again. But now it was so warm and occasionally felt like I was being fed. 
That was strange as me, me. I don't need anything such as food, water, or air. And then after, there was another memory of just everything being blue. Other memory begins of me slowly shifting from a third perspective of me perceiving my body to the first perspective. I was excited and ran to the mirror to see what I looked like, and I realized that it wasn't me and I was in a body. I was su surprised that I could move my hands for the first time. So there you go. This is my memory from the other side. Don't know if I'm experiencing a ghost or not. Help. I've experienced a few weird things in my apartment the last month. I can't recall if it's happened earlier than a month ago, but pretty sure it's at least the last month. I've lived in my apartment just about a year, never felt anything before. It's either a ghost or a presence or someone is entering my apartment while I'm sleeping. Two major things that happened. One, a few weeks ago I woke up thinking that my dog had jumped to my bed. He's a big dog, so I can feel the mattress weighing down when he lays. Usually he stays by my feet, but since I was cold, I called him to move up so I could hug him. I called out several times without response, so I eventually sat up to kind of drag him up. It sounds crueler than it was, and this was only to realize that he wasn't there. He was in his bed in the living room outside my bedroom. At the time, I was just blaming it on a dream and that I was just tired. I don't have my dog with me every day, Thursday through Sunday only. 2. This happened this morning, and I'm honestly freaked out. Last night when I was about to fall asleep, I was awoken by the sound of, well, imagine someone blowing out breath, a loud one into your ear. That sound. I can't recall feeling air, but I was also about to fall asleep. I just pretended again that I was dreaming and tried to fall asleep. This brings me to this morning. When I exited my apartment, I realized my door was unlocked. This has happened about two times before the last month, and I've blamed it on being tired. I usually check if my door is locked in the evening before I go to bed because I'm paranoid, and I'm certain that I locked it last night, which makes me believe that I did it the other two times as well. I have sometimes seen the lamp over my bed moving, amongst other smaller things, but blamed it on a draft or the ventilation. I don't know if ghosts or presences can move things or unlock things. Also, the previous person who rented my apartment is a bit crazy. Not just saying it, but truly honestly. It took me months to get all of the keys, hence why I think it might have something to do with that. However, nothing is ever missing from my apartment. I was at my parents' over Christmas, which is like five days, and my apartment was normal when I came home. I also never saw anyone the times I woke up while sleeping. Two experiences, one of which happened to me and one that was described to me. The first one happened to me personally. About a year ago, I was in the hospital for a severe respiratory infection that wasn't COVID or the flu. I have COPD, it sent me into respiratory failure. They had placed me on a BIPAP machine to help me breathe and treated me with steroids and antibiotics. They were able to take me off the BIPAP after a few days. They then placed me on the high-flow cannula, which allowed me to talk. So it was early evening of the day and I was placed in this new device. My sister was visiting me and a nurse and a respiratory therapist were in the room doing their jobs. The bedside on my left was cluttered with monitors and the breathing machine. There had been a bedside three-drawer nightstand there, but they had moved it and placed it by the door to make room for all the equipment that they were using. While all of this was going on, the food service orderly brought in my dinner tray. 
Because the area near my bed was full of machines and people, they placed the tray on the nightstand next to the door and left. I had no appetite and it was left on the nightstand for the orderly to pick up later. So the nurse and the RT were doing their thing, and I was talking to my sister, when suddenly the tray flew off the nightstand, sailed across the room, and crashed into the bathroom door, sending food onto the floor and all over the door. Everyone was silent at first, then my sister said, I guess someone really doesn't like the food. The nurse agreed with her and called someone from housekeeping to clean up. I was in that room for about ten more days and nothing else happened, but that was pretty freaky. Later during the same stay in the hospital, I told a night nurse about the food tray incident, and she told me a story about something that happened to her at a small rural hospital. She said that there had been an elderly woman patient who was terminally ill and was kind of difficult. She said the lady had long fingernails painted bright red and she would scratch at the bed and clothes while she was talking to the staff. The woman ended up dying in the room, but life went on. She then told me that a few days later they had put a young girl in the room and then late one night the little girl came running up to the nurse's station, crying about somebody being in her room. She said there was an old woman with long red fingernails scratching at the pillow and telling the little girl to get out of her bed. Needless to say, there was no one in there. Bubble outline slash white shadow type figures. All of my life, I've seen what I call bubble figures. They are bubble, translucent outline, or white smoke-like figures. A few months ago, I stumbled onto a post with similar experiencers, labeling them as cloaked alien beings. Those that made this declaration have seen the cloaked and uncloaked versions, allegedly. Before moving back to Texas in June, we lived in Alaska for three-plus years. And for the majority of that time, a figure was always consistently at the end of my bed. Moving back to Texas, I see or feel one in the doorway of my current bedroom. I don't know if it followed me or if it was something new. I don't know if this is related or not, but due to intense sleep paralysis in my teens, I always sleep with the light on and I've always had vivid dreams. My dreams in Alaska and here in the beginning were so vivid and disturbing while happening practically every single night. It would be as if I woke up exhausted every morning from a full night of various run-for-your-life scenarios. What I keep coming back to is consistency. There's always one consistently lurking in the same spot around my bedroom. Sometimes more show up, especially when I talk about them which is why I've spent my life pretending that I don't see them. I don't know how to find answers on my own. So, are they spirits, watchers, aliens, or something else? I look forward to hearing from those with similar experiences. A little girl is, was, or has been haunting my house. The first time something weird happened, I was daughter-sitting my girl, too, at night. I'm a single father, and she slept in my bed. Usually, as kids do, they didn't sleep unless I went to bed with her. So it was like 1 or 2 a.m. We were lying in bed, and I was pretending to be asleep. I had been quiet and still for at least 15 or 25 minutes, but I knew she was awake. She kept moving, and suddenly she started talking, or replying more likely. No, you're crazy. No, you're crazy. No, you're crazy. In Spanish, the sex of the addressee is implied. She was saying, no tu estas loca. 
So she said this like 10 to 12 times before I started shaking and trembling trying to suppress my laughter. So she felt this and put a hand on my back and said, Don't cry, Daddy. This moment I opened my eyes, looked at her and said, I'm not crying, I'm laughing. Who are you talking to? She pointed to the middle of the empty dark room and said, The little girl, La Nina. The room was empty and almost pitch black. You could barely see the outlines of the stuff. It's very small for a room, like a prison cell. So obviously I got scared shitless, got up, lit the room, and went to play at the PC while the baby's sitting on my lap, eventually asleep until morning. Eventually we moved out and came back some years later. At this point she's 12 or 13. She's shy and quiet and smart and didn't really live through her phone. She was and is an archaic kid, bless the heavens. We built a room in the living room, just the one wall we needed so that way she could have some privacy. She never wanted to sleep there and sometimes she didn't even play there. I didn't mind much until one day I got pissed and sent her to play in her room and the answer I got was, I don't like playing in that room. I feel like someone's watching me. And sometimes I even think I see a little girl in the corner of my eye. I didn't pay much attention to him, just laughed and told her you should be afraid of the living, or something like that. This other time, we had a fridge box on the balcony. This was very near the quote-unquote room. Sometimes she used to play in it and even had it arranged like a clubhouse or something like that. So I get home and shout to see where she is because she didn't come to the door to say hi. She shouted from the balcony, Dad, come. When I got there, she got out of the box, and all of this was during the day, by the way, and she told me that she had been trapped in the box for some time, afraid to get out, because she felt a presence outside. She didn't even peek, and she told me straight up that she thought it was the little girl. People have seen it standing there in the middle of the room like washed up Samara, the girl in the ring, this one with the white dress, the long black hair over her face, and is always looking down at her feet. She doesn't make eye contact, opposite of another thing I saw, another story, but she's usually facing the door, although I'm pretty sure I've seen her from another angle, almost like her full back. She didn't disappear unless you tried to focus her. She was not a glimpse if you just stood there watching from the corner of your eye. She was there. Nor she was a trick of the light. She showed up in the dark and you could clearly see her. And when the light was on also, I rearranged the stuff in the room. Small room, very little stuff. Nothing of that height. When I got tired of seeing her, even though I got rid of her. My daughter, 14, had to migrate to Berlin with her mother. Crying face. Fuck communism. And I dismantled that room. I'm actually halfway there, but not advancing. But I have a friend come over for Wild Rift. It's a game. Sleepovers, ugh, excuse me, sleepovers. And one of the first times he came when he went to the bathroom, that part of the house, he told me he felt like a bad vibe or presence was coming from that area, specifically where the room used to be. My sister-in-law also dropped this on a normal conversation like a bad vibe or presence coming from that area, specifically where the room used to be. To be honest, I don't feel her there anymore. There is something all right, nor have I seen her in a long time. That part of the house doesn't have much lighting, and I am a little scared when going there, which I do normally. But truth be told, I try not to pay attention or look too much. I'm open to questions, and if you like that story, I have a couple more. Different, not involving children, except the one I mentioned in the story. Oh, 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 an unrelated to La Nina, but still interesting. My daughter, 12, used to love sleeping with my mom. This one time my mom told me that she had a nightmare, and when I asked her, she refused to tell me, but she did say it wasn't a nightmare. I don't want to talk about it, and I never... Emphasis on never want to sleep in that room again. Fast forward a few months, and one time I wanted to be alone in her room, probably fighting over the phone because I was mad, and I told her, in a bad manner, to go to sleep with her grandma because I wanted to be alone. 
yelled at me. On the verge of tears, she said, I'm not going to cap all of this, but she was yelling. Sorry, the guy who's writing this story has so many parentheses. It's mind-boggling. I told you I never wanted to sleep there again. The last time, something grabbed my ankle and tried to pull me under the bed. I wasn't asleep, nor did I dream it, and I got dragged, and she's skinny and little. Across the bed, and my legs were dangling, rather, crescendo. Smiley face, LOL. Not sleep, exclamation mark. I'm going to the PC. And I swear the sun caught her playing Roblox. A game, in parentheses. <laughs> See ya.